Hello, beautiful people. Happy Saturday. Happy almost new year. We are here at the very tail end of the Christmas season. Christmas is over, but I still consider it Christmas season. We are going to be talking one of my favorite Christmas thriller, Christmas horror movies. It will be my last time talking horror on this channel, but we will be discussing P2 and I have a special guest with me as well. The specialist of guests that I could possibly have, Miss Tyra from Struggle Reviews TV. If you are not familiar with her, get familiar, get from under a rock. Let's see who are all in the live. We have TG. What's up? You are always here, always supporting. Thank you for showing up, TG. Happy New Year. We have Miss Daria. Hi, Miss Tyra. Good evening. Happy Saturday. Happy New Year's. Thank you for showing up, showing love. We have Breeze, thank you for showing up and being here in the live. Now, I will not hold you guys any longer from the long awaited, much anticipated, highly loved, never duplicated, and all the other rhyming words. We have Miss Tyra <laughs> from Struggle Reviews TV. Oh. Hello, Nikki. <laughs> Hello, this Mr. feels Tyra. all surreal like i get to be a guest like i feel so special let me sit up in my and chair this is monumental because you are the very first guest on my channel ever right, right? and I'm, I'm happy to i'm happy to do it like i was you know yeah first of all y'all i had to convince her to ask me because you know she wouldn't even because we so close she i wasn't even on her radar for guests i was like hello i can come <laughs> on the channel so i'm very happy to be here and be the first guest <laughs> yeah, because um, I reached out to some other YouTubers that paid me dust, and then <laughs> I asked Miss Tyra, <laughs> who I should have went to first. But you know, I guess you're right because we just always chit chat. I guess I don't really think of it as like, hey, let me ask Tyra. But the most perfect person we could have to come talk P two, <laughs> right? Oh my gosh! <laughs> and I can't wait to hear your thoughts. I do not know how she feels about the movie. She saw it recently for the first time when I, you know, talked to her about it. So I will be just as surprised as you guys are to hear what Miss Tyra has to say. Yeah. And let's kind of start to get into it. We are discussing P2 <laughs> from 2007. It is a psychological thriller, psychological horror. A businesswoman is pursued by a psychopath after being locked in a parking garage on Christmas Eve. And I feel like this is one of those movies, not a bunch of tricks and frills, just a parking garage, a crazy ass Wes Bentley holding a woman hostage. So Miss Tyra, how do you feel about like horror thrillers on Christmas? Is that a genre or subgenre that you like to get into? If it's like Christmassy, uh, I stay away from the Christmas theme. Anything, you know, I don't like Christmas. Um, <laughs> I've never like been a hella fan of Christmas. So sometimes if it's, you know, um, if it is that, that time of the season, I'll get into something like, uh, you know, Krampus or, you know, so, something like that. But it's not most of the time when you get into Christmas horror, it's, it's, it's not up to par. Like, it's always really campy, a little over the top, a little Santa theme. And I just I just really don't be here for that all the time, which is why I was kind of here for this one, because it was so much uh, different from that. It is Christmas, but that's about it when it comes to this movie. <laughs> you know what? I agree. I love anything horror on Christmas because I'm just morbid. But I completely agree that it is actually really hard to find a good Mm -hmm. Like a horror Christmas, a horror thriller, because they are all very cheesy and campy. <laughs> but that leads me to our next question, which do you have any um favorite Christmas movies, which you just told us you kind of stay away from. <laughs> but just to get into like my top 10 favorite Christmas movies, the movies that I have to see every year for Christmas. Number one is going to be Inside. It's pretty disturbing. It's very dark. We have a woman who is pregnant who has to fight off a home invasion if you're squeamish stay away from it miss tyra have you ever seen inside no but i mean i like to be inside so I, i'll check it out <laughs> i think you should you're not you're not squeamish i think i no. think you would like it and then number two i have the ever classic die hard yes. which i know you've seen die hard of course love die hard love it down 
I'm the type, I feel like anything that happens on or around Christmas, even if the plot is not centered on Christmas, mm. I still consider it a Christmas movie. Child, where is Home Alone? <laughs> like you, where is, where is, where is Macaulay Culkin? <laughs> do you even watch Home Alone? You just said you don't do Christmas. I said horror. <laughs> <laughs> It's that certain staples are, you know, 24 hours of Christmas story and, and home alone is it a part two. It's getting watched during the holidays. That's just a given. I thought that was like a, a unwritten rule. See, I don't do the warm and fuzzy Christmas <laughs> stuff. <laughs> That's just not my cup of tea. Surprise but, you ain't got uh, 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 Jack Frost up here. The little killer snowman situation. I'm surprised that ain't here. That's the more campy horror yes. that we were just talking about. <laughs> <laughs> so that wouldn't be in the favorite, hmm. but we are getting into P2, which hmm. I still remember my absolute first time seeing P2, but it leads me to whenever I see movies like this, I always like to contemplate how could I survive? Like if I was in this situation, what would I do to survive? I always feel like that is just so fun. It's something me and my mother used to do when I was a kid. Miss Tyra, if you are leaving your office late at night on Christmas Eve and Wes Bentley kidnaps you, <laughs> how would you survive? First of all, if Wes Bentley came and kidnapped me, I would have said, what's up? You know, because it's Wes <laughs> Bentley. Wes, Wes Bentley is fine. But just for namesake, if he's actually coming to... First of all, why, why are you not getting off with everybody else? I don't play that working in the office late. We going to wait till all the other cubicles are empty and then try to go downstairs. And no, 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 no. I'm leaving with the rest of the rush, rest of the crowd when it's daylight out. And it really had pissed me off why she why she had all that baggage. Like, where you, <laughs> why she, why she <laughs> was having all that stuff? That made me so mad. Like, girl, you have everything on your back with the Christmas tree and you trying to get away from this damn killer. But if it were me, like, this, this is a really uh, tough situation because the way he does entrap her, you know, she does make it to the car and everything, but, you know, he rigs that to not work. And I just, uh, she's she's just kind of trapped. I would have never been in this situation because I'm not being alone with nobody's uh, security guard on Christmas in no dark parking garage. Absolutely not. So I, I, can't, re I can't really say what I would have done, but... Having a key key with him would not have been one of them. Because, you know, you left the door open, girl. And then you was holding all that stuff. So you was just asking to die. <laughs> that was irking me, too, when she was carrying every single thing <laughs> running. Th oh, my God. Yeah. But, yeah, as she's trying to do, you can tell he's very off from the minute she's interacting with him. But she's, like you said, doing the niceties. I wouldn't mm -hmm. even been doing that. Mm -mm. When he keeps trying to pressure her to like, hey, let me try to start your car. No, bro. Nope. I said I'm getting the cab. Like, I'm not even going through that. But I feel like it was multiple times for me that I could have survived. For one, he gives her a chance to call her family, who she's supposed to be going to her family's house. Mm -hmm. I don't care if you got your hand wrapped around my neck. If I got to die, my family go at least know something happened. So I would have took that moment to yell out. And me and my mother actually have like a cold word That's for nice. if something is going down that we could say that just sounds casual. So I would have, I would have chucked that in there. That's smart. But then as she is running through this little garage, we get into a moment where the cops come. Oh, but God. she's distracted by a tape he put on. I, I watched yeah. the other one. Oh, know. that pissed me off. Yes, I would not have had my focus on that. I would be like, oh, hell no, nah, this is a trick. He trying to get my attention. I would have got saved when the cops showed up. <laughs> that pissed me off. Like, there was, there was more than childhood lingering with that phone and all the... Yes. It, was just, it, it was just, it was, it was too much. But, you know, I take these movies for what they are because, first of all, it felt like they were in, like, New York Times Square on Christmas. And you mean tell me when a single soul nowhere on the street, like, it's one random homeless person. Ain't nobody out, you know, to hear your outcries. It was it, it was just a whole lot. But, like, yeah, we don't play them, you know, late office games. Like, as a woman, you lead with everybody else. <laughs> you, I need a gentleman. I'm, I'm a very damsel in distress type of woman. I need, can you walk me to my car? I'm one of them. Like, can you walk me to my car? Because... If they're going to get somebody, I need you to get, to get you. Get the gentleman, not me. Like, I got a lot to live for. Don't <laughs> don't come for me. But, yeah, this was – we don't play these late night. Like, oh, I can just do all my work and be the last one out of the office. No, that's how you get killed with a T. 
<laughs> I feel the exact same way. Even when I was looking for apartments recently in downtown Nashville, a lot of the apartments had parking garages. And I just was like, that nope. feels like a horror movie. Like, I'm not about to walk through a parking garage nope. late at night trying to get home. First no. of all, when as soon as I'm in a, a parking garage, I just feel like Candyman is going to call my name any minute. So I don't have time to be feeling like that every single day when I'm trying to get in my house. Like, absolutely not. No. <laughs> so we have where we are at the top of the movie. And I actually enjoy how the movie opens. It opens with a jump scare. Mm -hmm. And I know a lot of people do not like jump scares in horror. I love them, honestly. I don't care if it's a bad jump scare. I don't care if it's one that's very, you know, you could see it coming. I just think they're fun. But I think this is actually a good jump scare when we first start off the movie and it sets a good tone. And then we are introduced to our main character. And you might notice her from, she was like on Criminal Minds for like two episodes. <laughs> But uh, we have um, Angela, if I remember yeah. correctly, that was her name. Please don't never forget and, that name. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> she is working late on Christmas Eve. We're introduced to her. We can tell she's, you know, very posh, very working in this nice area. And she actually has a co-worker that comes in who apparently like assaulted her at the Christmas party because he just had a baby. <laughs> What he tells I, well, I, I thought he had had, you know, a little too much eggnog situation, a little spike, and he was, you know, feeling a little loose. That's what I thought. I didn't think I was like, it was like, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, I thought she was, yeah, like, no, no, that's not what this was. I was just getting on the elevator, sir. I was not coming for you. I didn't think he actually physically went in there with intention to. He's like, oh, I thought we was thinking the same thing. All right, let me get my ass out of here. <laughs> I just don't know why he brought the new baby into it. Like, oh, we just had a baby. Like, what that mean? <laughs> like, she didn't give me no attention, girl. Just let me right. rub on it. Just, just let me smell it, and then I'll go back home to my wife. Right. But, of course, he did not just jump in for no reason. We'll get to him later, because he will come up again. But Angela is talking to her sister on the phone. Like, yes, I'm coming. I will be there. She says, you know, good night to Carl, who is a little security guy in the building. She goes to head out, but her car will not start. And that kind of pops us into our introduction of Wes Bentley. She ends up trying to go get some type of help. And he ends up, hold on, let's go, let's go back. He ends up trying to tell her, you know, forget trying to get a cab. You probably left your lights on. Mm -hmm. And I hated this whole first interaction <laughs> she had with him because I needed her to yeah. shut him. You can nicely shut people down. Yeah, like I don't leave my damn lights on. You can't tell right. me that I did. No, I didn't. I don't do that. She's very like, I would never do that. It's like, well, yeah, you know, you know, like, no, I do know because I don't do that. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> And I'm like, I would have just, well, I just want to, I just want to help. Let me, no, thank you. You can help me by getting mm -hmm. me upstairs so I can get to the cab. But no, he was no. Very you know what this reminded me of? You ever see Lovely what? Bones? You ever seen Lovely Bones? Yes. yes. You know, when at the end when he's trying to like lure the older girl to like get like, oh, you, you just have to be really weary of, you know, it's one thing to be helpful, but. I don't really trust anybody who's trying to just be too helpful. If you respectfully tell somebody, no, I don't need any help or because, you know, sometimes even if you do need help, you still have to think about your safety first. But, you know, I need help. But, yeah, do I really want the help if I'm alone in a parking garage and I don't really know, you No, my safe bet, you know, just for myself, I'll just handle it. But, you know, thank you for the offer. But, you know, everybody who when you keep persisting nah, yeah, get on my get on my face. <laughs> I feel the same way. And I feel like it's a difference between helpful and forceful. Mm -hmm. Like if I straight up say no, thank you, that should be it. Mm -hmm. Not keep forcing it. But he obviously has like this weird attitude and he's telling him I was just trying to help and he keeps going on. And then his weird ass go to say, uh, you know, I got a little meal prepared. Want to have dinner with me? <laughs> <laughs> red flag, red flag. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> sir. So Angela is able to get upstairs and, you know, from the parking garage to the lobby, she's able to call a cab and 
Tyra, would you have checked the doors as you was waiting for the cab to pull up? Girl, first of all, I'm going to be outside in the cold. I don't, I don't, any time I'm catching a cab or Uber, whatever it is, I'm outside on the street. Cause I, cause you know, you already know if we don't see you, we driving off. Like right. I'm already outside. Child probably called it outside. Like <laughs> I just, I like to be out in public. If you're waiting, like, no, nah, I'm ain't no checking, checking the doors, girl. I'm already outside. <laughs> <laughs> so of course she just so happened to be extremely tired even though she's on her way to a christmas party and she falls asleep waiting for the cab but he i thought this was weird the cab calls to let her know he's outside mm -hmm. but then once the doors are locked and she's trying to get you know Wes bentley or carl or somebody he just drives the hell off <laughs> Why this you girl, this is new york this is New York. You got five. Girl, you got five seconds to get out here. You know how many other people I could pick up between the, the next round and now? Somebody's always on the street trying to hail a cab in New York. Bye. <laughs> I'm missing out on money. Why he couldn't he go? <laughs> so she ends up going back to the parking garage looking for Wes Bentley so the doors can be open. She's yelling at him through the little, you know, speaker like, wake up, you idiot. The cab done left. <laughs> and as she's going through the parking garage, she's locked in. You got the gate locked. She can't get out upstairs. All of a sudden, the lights start turning off <laughs> in the parking garage. I would have melted. <laughs> <laughs> like, you in a large, however many structure parking garage, and the only light all of a sudden is the light from your phone? Hell no. Yeah. Yeah, she is walking through a dark parking garage with the light from her phone. And all of a sudden, Wes Bentley is behind her and ganks her up. <laughs> Girl, still packing all this stuff. Girl, I would have dropped everything and slid <laughs> under somebody's car. Let me feel my way and find a car. <laughs> and then, you know, see what was what when I get underneath that car. I'm not just going to stand here. And, oh, my God. What happened? No, we'll figure out what happened once we get a hiding spot. Like, <laughs> she was taking too long. <laughs> Because at that point, F the Santa suit and the gifts. I don't care about that stuff. <laughs> I need to live. <laughs> I thought it was just so weird that they had her keep carrying that stuff. <laughs> so after she's knocked out, she wakes up in his little office. And he listening to what Elvis with the Santa suit on that she was packing. And it was so crazy and trippy to me how she's kidnapped. She's chained up. And he having a casual conversation. <laughs> <laughs> that was the best part of the movie. How casual he was about this entire situation is the best thing this movie has going for it because it's like he he seriously doesn't see any fault in what he's doing. This is a, a regular, like, you know, girl, I've been waiting to get a, an opportunity to take you on a proper date. Like, this is kidnapping. <laughs> you are you are kidnapping me on Christmas of all days, and I am chained up against my will. This is not a proper date. He's like, you know, would you like some more wine? Like, okay, you crazy. <laughs> you crazy. <laughs> like, I don't even know if you should mix wine with chloroform or whatever you just knocked me the hell out with. But I think the standout weird moment where he was being casual that I thought was so crazy was when she is literally, she is dressed in a in different clothes. She has on this little slip dress, which she obviously wasn't wearing before to work. And she's like, what happened to my clothes? And he said, well, I told you, you fell. <laughs> <laughs> oh, your clothes got dressed. <laughs> I was just mad so looking at because you know I be looking at everything. I was like, "That's a sad ass plate of Christmas food." That you be that's what you was over here like. You, you been trying to entertain me for how long? He's been you. You can clearly tell that he has been. Uh, that's another thing about uh, thinking about yourself as a woman, and you know, a lot of us, especially she's very uh, strong minded and work oriented, so she doesn't change up her routine. So he knows everything about her before you know they even sit here, and it's just like, well, yeah, I um. I need to, it was like, you know, no, I already know that you're not going to go do that. I already know. It, it was like, this is, this is crazy. You, you, you just never know who's watching you. And I just yeah. couldn't believe that this, this one main security guard was in this whole building. Like, ain't nobody else here. <laughs> <laughs> ain't nobody else here. Then you kidnap me to feed me old raisins and this dry lunch <laughs> meat. Like you, you supposed to hook it up. You've been waiting on this. So, so hard. It's sad meal. <laughs> not dry raisins. <laughs> it was a sad little plate. <laughs> But it was just so strange. And of course, this is when 
she tries to say, oh, well, I have a boyfriend waiting on me. Oh. And I did not understand why she was trying to convince him she had a boyfriend. Yeah, she ain't she ain't ask the the oh, girl, she's making me mad. I had to. <laughs> I was I trying to. I don't have but a cat. <laughs> Let me go. <laughs> girl, I ain't tried to, like, it's like, oh, well, what is he wearing? What kind of car is he wearing? I, Right. I myself, if I said that my boyfriend is gonna he's gonna be here and you should just let me go because he's gonna be here really soon. You just you just take that and run with it. Like it was nothing stealth. He let her let like even though he already knew, like it was it was something that piqued his interest a little bit to go like, well, damn, does she have a boyfriend? Like, could it like maybe she's and then she messed it up trying to play 21 questions with him. Absolutely not. I don't think he ever believed her. I think he was playing with her. Mm. He knew that girl ain't had no damn boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> he knew the names of her sister and nieces and the whole family. Ooh. He been watching her. Boy. I'm like, that's why I'm like, mm. all you. That's why I don't even know why she made up the boyfriend. Your family is waiting on you. That's good enough. <laughs> like, you don't need the phantom boyfriend. But mm. then, of course, he is just being a sociopath, wanting to hold her, and he goes to say, you know, I got a gift for you. Let's let's take a little ride. Let's. <laughs> Let's take a ride. <laughs> <laughs> and this crazy girl think they really finna go for a ride and she's confused when they still strolling through the parking garage. I just hate it. She kept trying to like, let me reach him in a certain space because I just know that you're better than this. Uh, Tom, Um, Tom, the girl, he, this is a fool. Like this is, this is, at first I thought she was just like, okay, let me go along and get along. But it was like, she almost had real expectations of, you know, I think you're better than this. I just feel like if I, you know, convince you, you'll let me go and let this gentleman go also because I'm Angela. Like, hell no, this is a fool. This, this nigga's crazy. He's crazy. <laughs> That's why I could not understand. Like, do you not, why are you trying to reason with a madman? Is it not clear to you that he is insane? <laughs> Hmm, it was very Caucasian. You know, everybody says you're supposed to stay calm in a crisis situation. Maybe if I'm calm, he'll feel the calmness off of me and be calm too. Like, girl, no, this man is insane. The first opportunity I would have gotten, like, don't even get me started with this car and her fiddling with that lock. I was, oh, I was getting mad. <laughs> I was getting so mad. Like, girl, if you don't yank that, this is your opportunity, girl. This is your opportunity to get away and you sitting here trying to, oh, I wouldn't want to sit. Girl, I don't care. Cause, oh. As soon as he would have got out of that car, child, I would have been gone. Same. Same. And I'm sorry. We This is when the guy pops up, the co-worker that tried to kiss or whatever <laughs> on, at the Christmas party. I'm sorry for you, sir. Um, I will speak at your wake. But <laughs> as, as far as I'm concerned, you already dead. So I wouldn't even be sitting here trying to reason with this guy to not kill you. I would have, you won't die in vain. As he killing you, I will be getting away. Not you won't die in vain. Like, no, she was seriously like, I just can't just... Pop out of this car and leave this this innocent butt. Like, oh girl, he 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 you already dead as far as I'm concerned. I'm sorry, you you taped up. I ain't got time to save you and me. <laughs> I gotta be selfish at this moment and think about myself. Like, uh-uh. Where was you when I was calling for somebody in this empty building? How long you been in this chat? Lord. Exactly. So we have a uh, Tom in the car trying to tell Angela, like, I saw because he's a security guard. So of course he saw the footage. Um, and that's what he shows her before he drives her off. He saw the footage of them in the elevator with the, I don't know, was he a boss or co-worker trying to mm -hmm. like fill her up or whatever? Yeah. And he wants to, you know, get retribution. And she's like, oh, he apologized and, and, and everything. <laughs> she reasoning with the madman. I do not know why. Now he apologized. Child, when she got the howling about, well, um, if you could just, I was like, <sighs> What what upset me was that he kept trying. I was like, maybe if she just make herself out to just be a hoe, she he'll let her go. Because he was holding her to uh, the standard of being this angel. How dare you put your filthy paws on Angela? She is a good Christian woman type of energy. I was like, girl, just make yourself out to be a harlot or something. Maybe maybe he'll get disgusted. Say, I'm getting I'm getting different D every night. You thought I was clean and virgin on this white dress? No, you know, I'm a heifer. No, she just kept trying to reach his, you know, softer side and talk about how he apologized and we don't have to do this and you're better than this. Time. Stop saying my name. I was like, right. Tell him to shut up. Tom, she get on my nerves too. <laughs> yeah, I was kind of with him. He was like, stop saying. Why do you keep saying Tom, Tom? Because she was saying Tom like a hundred times. <laughs> Terrible. 
of course, he wants to show this, you know, teach this guy lesson, bashes him up with the flashlight as his gift to her. That's her Christmas present. <laughs> and then he ends up, that's not enough because she's still in the car pleading for the guy. Come on, he need a hospital. Why would I think that the guy that just bashed him in the head cares that he needs a hospital? I don't understand what she was trying to do. She was, she was just a little late. She was a little late. That's all. We we already knew what she was trying to do. When when she got caught in that parking garage and the lights went off, she was still holding all that stuff. That's all I needed to see. Like when she catch air mid air when the lights go off, girl, I'm gone. I ain't looking. I'm gone. She's still holding stuff and what, girl? If you don't drop that stuff and get the hell out of here, no. After that, in my book, she was slow. I'm sorry. She was in charge of the Santa suit. She had to hold on to the Santa suit. Girl, I'm trying to hold on to my life. Girl, no. When the lights come back on, you and several other people can come back for that Santa suit. I ain't going to nothing. No. <laughs> so, of course, after he bashes the guy up with the flashlight and she's still crying for he need a hospital, he freaking mows the man down in such an amazingly gruesome scene. <laughs> Did you like seeing the guts and intestines spill out? Time? It was. It was cute. I was like, I don't know how how much. Uh, because at first I thought it was just these two, and I was like, well, she's on the, you know, she's on the cover, so <laughs> somebody has to be the final girl. Like it was already empty, and we don't leave this space. So I was wondering where we were going to get the gore, where we were, where were we going to get the bodies, who was going to actually die. So I was here for this, like, oh, because if I just have to watch this and listen to her say Tom the whole time, I'm sorry, Nikki, I was going to have to cut it off. <laughs> So I, was well, happy to see it. I was happy. Yeah, to they put a little, put a little blood, a little blood, <laughs> a little bit, a little bit. But I feel like that's what I like about this movie. It's not really. It's very simplistic, but mm -hmm. still effective in my humble opinion. But once he ends up, you know, smashing old boy like a pancake, that's <laughs> when Angela finally learns how to work the door that she's been trying to open for like 20 minutes. That made me mad. Like, oh, it's real. It's real. Let me get out of here. Girl, you should have been out of here. This reminded me a whole lot. I was like, oh, Nikki, we should have just, we should have just watched. Have you seen ATM? Yes. I, uh, Another I Christmas know. one? So yeah. Um, ATM. Now that is like a movie that I like to watch because I like to be tortured and I like pain. Like that's the only reason. <laughs> that is like the worst movie ever, but I get a sick enjoyment out of it. <laughs> Now, hold on now. I know you're not comparing this to ATM. I am. Hey, it reminded me a lot of the, the one. We got the one little sadistic stalker. We're in one location the whole time. The little check. Even this, what we get here where she's getting in the elevator and he's trying to use tactics, the water to get her out. This was very ATM to me. All he's missing is a leather bomber jacket <laughs> and the a physical ATM. But this is very much the same. But this is also where we have him still in this crazy situation <laughs> saying stuff to her like he thinks stuff is normal. He really tells this girl that she need to have more respect for herself. <laughs> Sir, you kidnapped me. He, he's out of there. It's like, oh, this is a whole sociopath. Like, you know what? I, I expect it better from you. If I tell you somebody needs to die on your behalf, you're just supposed to rock with it. I, I, I don't like how you're acting right now. <laughs> You're not appreciating this gift. I just caught a whole body for you in your honor. And this is this is how you repay me. You ain't even eat the, the, the cranberry sauce on the plate. This is just not going the way I thought it would. This is this is a sad first date, Angela, but it's okay. We have more first dates to come. Like, no, crazy. I'm trying to get I'm trying to get away from you. I'm I'm afraid. I'm scared. I'm terrified. Jesus. <laughs> but he was, and I feel like that's also what makes him really creepy. Is for one, mm -hmm. he's very calm. Oh, and God. normal in the situation, but then he'll suddenly have like an outburst where he's screaming and then he's calm again. <laughs> it was <laughs> I loved how he played that role. I just thought it was really effective. No, I just love this moment in the elevator when he decided, like she thought she had like, oh, is anybody there? I'm like, oh yeah, like he switched up his whole voice, became another person. <laughs> Became another person, got her hopes all up. Like, oh, is it? Like, oh, no, no, girl. I'm just playing. Girl, it's just me, girl. Come on out of there. We got stuff to talk about. We was just getting to know each other. Like, no. And again, just acting normal. She thinks she's able to reach help calling through the elevator. But really, it's, it's his time. Change his voice. Like, oh, I'm sorry. I, but I just wanted to talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> Like, oh, I just wanted to talk. That's all. And he 
really is just telling her like, you know what? Fine. Cause she refuses to come out of the elevator. She refuses to talk to him. He's screaming. He's like, okay, fine. I guess I'll just stay in this parking lot alone. Cause that's what everyone wants. And I'm just like, he is really bad. She crazy. <laughs> crazy you love her so much but we're gonna get her soaking wet almost drown her and send her out into the freezing like he's trying to lure her out but i can catch whole hypothermia out here <laughs> and i'm sorry but i'm just gonna drown like i'm not going out there <laughs> or i'm just she climbing the elevator like mission impossible but yeah she she the car fell out <laughs> the little gun fell out it's just like oh like oh cold. like what what cold is now, I will say, I wish we could have seen Carl yeah. get attacked and killed. I don't yeah. like that the body just pops up because it's already not. I mean, like you said, we just basically follow her. We know she's not going to die. So we could have added in Tom. I'm not Tom. Added in Carl so we could have seen, you know, a little more action on screen. Yeah, just a little bit. A little bit goes a long way. Yes. Yes. Especially in a movie like this. But I still mm -hmm. like it. But yeah, that's one little knock that I had for mm -hmm. it. So even though he is able to get her out of the elevator, of course she's still running. And this crazy guy is just like, you know what? I can't chase you around all night. Child, the first thing I would have did, as soon as he hit them, it would have stabbed that dog. Because <laughs> I know how you feel about dogs, but he would have had to go immediately because why are you giving me away? I'm trying. I'm trying to you yeah, he was he was a little bit too good of a guard dog. Like at this point, you're an accomplice and you have to die right along with your little master because you 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 giving me away, sir. You gotta go. And you know what? The, normally a dog dying in a movie is just such a like I hate it. I have to that's the one spoiler I always want before I watch a movie. So trigger warning for anybody else. If you haven't seen the movie, the dog dies. Even though we talking spoilers, but if you still just gonna go watch it for the first time, prepare yourself. But this what be making me like this is why crazy people don't need dogs. Because why is you inserting a dog into your human mess and not a dog gotta die? Oh, okay. she, oh, that even made me mad. She was trying to go back in for her purse and her phone, and she's wasting time trying to finesse. But girl, if you don't punch that dog in the face and go get that phone, you wasting time. Lord, she was moving too slow. She was, she was, and I'm the type of person I'm really not scared. Like you could have, like this dog could be barking at me. I'm not gonna be scared. Like I'm just really not. I you could bite me, but I need to get my purse. Like no, no that's a rock waller. No, you can't bite me. <laughs> you can you cannot bite me. But Look, it, it was very clear phone. that it couldn't get. She she it was just only so many places for her to go. So like when you have a moment to maybe get away or any anything you know to get a night like girl go for it like it was so many moments where she could have had the one like it, it was it's a typical you know oh I'm gonna stab the killer one time in the shoulder then I'm gonna run off like I did girl you know you stabbing you keep stabbing that be making me mad keep going what was you giving grace for kill him but you know that's just me but you know we wouldn't have no movie if we did that but the, the time she was wasting there and just it, it, she just was. It was uh, later on, it seemed like she got smart. Like, okay, you know, when we get into the cameras and her, you know, knocking certain stuff down, like, I don't need him to see me at all times. She did make some smart decisions in the end. But in the beginning, we were really slow. <laughs> yeah, I feel like it was, for some reason, taking it a moment to sink in for her that you're going to have to save yourself. This man is really crazy. Like, there's no bargaining with him. He's not going to let you go. So she did start to kind of wise up like, oh, shoot, I really got to fight for my life. Yeah. So and not even just her. Don't we open with him doing this to somebody else? No, 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 no. That opening scene was her. That's when she's mm. in that trunk. Oh, because okay. we in, they show us the opening scene with that um, jump scare that I talked about, which is actually a scene that comes up where she's running around and she's able to get her cell phone. She's trying to call the cops, but she's trying. She's handcuffed. <laughs> So she tries to squeeze her hands through the little Has gate. Has no I signal. <laughs> <laughs> and she drops the cell phone, but she is able to call 911. But she ends up running through here and the cops come. But that's when she's distracted by the TV. He ends up tasing her, puts her in the trunk of the car. So just as the cops are leaving, she's able to break through the trunk. That's the jump, the jump scale we get at the top of the, mm. the movie. That's her in that trunk. Okay. So once like the second the cops is out, that's when she finally appears. 
<laughs> then he unleashes the damn dog. Girl, you took yeah. too long. You watching him kiss on you. Girl, I don't care. He could have did more than that. Go get the right. Oh. I don't worry about that when the cops going through the evidence. I got to get out of here. Like, no. I, I really wouldn't have cared. He's doing too much. He had time to sing songs and do his <laughs> Elvis performances. Like, girl, he, you had a lot of idle time. He was living his best life, spinning records, being a DJ. Like, girl, you, you could have, you had so many things that you could have done. Right. And this now, this is what made me mad and made me feel like, you know what? This is a scenario I could survive because after the dog chases her, which he, Tom is so bad, she crazy. He, you, she probably would should have been dead. Like your dog would have killed her, sir. But <laughs> she's able to. They have this rental car area in the parking garage, a whole office in there with keys to cars. And after she kills the dog. I'm sitting here like, baby, do you know that would have been my first yeah. stop? I would have went in there for a phone to call the cops or either keys, and I would have tried to ram through that gate, which I wouldn't have made it because you can't really crash. But at least when the cops came, they would have been able to know something was awry. Like, I'm like, <laughs> why didn't we try to go in here? Because yeah, she, she wasn't, th she was scared, you know, she was... <laughs> She was trying to talk Tom off the ledge. She just thought, you know, if she talked, she didn't realize how crazy. I don't know why, because if you're kidnapping people, like, and, and it was just like, you have nothing to lose at this moment. Like, this person has, this isn't like a stranger. This is a whole freak. It's a stranger, but this is a, a, a security guard who actually works here. <laughs> yeah. So if, yeah. like, what was he going? Like, all right, well, I mean, unhandcuff you. I'll see you tomorrow. Like, no, he had intentions of taking you somewhere else or, or getting taking you out this world. So, you don't have nothing to lose at this moment. She she was, you know, it, it just took her a minute to realize that. And yeah, and she definitely, I will say, I agree. Like, the pacing that it took her to finally really start fighting, <laughs> like, she wouldn't have survived the jigsaw trap. She would have spent the bulk of the time just sitting there contemplating, like, girl, like, you got to move. You got to, which I get it. The human reaction time could be a little slow, but. She had a she had a trying to get me fired. <laughs> <laughs> Again, Tom is just being very um, normal in this situation. And he finds his dog dead and is mad. He, like he mad. Like, why would you hurt an innocent animal? Why would you hurt an innocent animal? What's wrong? What kind of person that like what it's crazy? <laughs> like he was really shocked and upset. <laughs> he was. He was. As far as he's concerned, I'm the innocent person. I'm just trying to trying to be your man, trying to show you a good time, and this is the way you repay me. Then you're gonna kill my dog on top of that. Oh, you know what? You're you're not who I thought you were, Angela. Like, <laughs> but you know what? I really want to know what she is able to call nine one one when she finally breaks into the rental office, but mm -hmm. the, the the line is busy. That happens a lot in movies. Now, I ain't never Lies. called 911 outside of when I was like five. Do 911 really be putting people on hold and be I, I don't. Maybe it depends on what area you live in. You know, us down south, I have never been in a scenario where 911 needed to be called and they said, hold please. Like, what? <laughs> what? No, never. That's never. Especially when she was holding on a very long time. Like, absolutely Yes. Not. And I'm just like, is this real? Like, I, I want to just test it and call 911 and be like, you know what? I don't have an emergency. I just wanted to know that, like, if y'all would really answer the phone. <laughs> yeah, you're going to get arrested. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I can't just test out 911. I just want to, you know, I just want to know if it actually works at all. Because Yeah, you, 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 get, you getting arrested. Don't, don't play on them people's time. We over here entertaining your phone call. We probably missed somebody who really needed us. Ma'am, no. <laughs> you go down to the station and ask a question. Don't you call them people? <laughs> I just want to do like, it was an episode of Seinfeld when Jerry calls 911. And he's like, hey, 911, how are you? <laughs> <laughs> just want to call one day. No. But we end up having Angela in a rental office. And now I like this part where Tom comes in looking for her and she's able to trick him into looking into the wrong cabinet. And mm -hmm. I like how they do it because as she's hiding, you see his flashlight glaring over her. It yeah. looks like he's about to go to her cabinet, but she ripped her dress so it looks like it's hanging out. So he goes yeah. to the wrong one. Yeah, she comes up behind them, sprays the chemicals in his eyes, like knocks him in the head with a canister, locks him in. The way he was yelling, Angela, <laughs> <laughs> he 
he was heartbroken. Like Tyra, he was really heartbroken. He was. She broke his heart. Like he just wanted a day. He just wanted some company. <laughs> he just wanted to show somebody a good time on the holidays. Like I've been watching you for a long time. You know, he romanticized this whole situation. <laughs> this was this was the perfect. Uh, it kind of low key reminded me of. Did you see? Uh, let's think it's on Hulu. Fresh. Yes. Yes. I yeah. You know, that. just like like oh, you know, this is. This is normal. Like I'm doing what I got to do, you know, feed my appetite. Like this is, this is scary. Like why are you being so stiff, girl? I know I cut off a side of your ass, but don't you still care about me? Like just completely delusional for the other person's like preference. Like no, you're kidnapping me. You're hurting me. This isn't safe. This isn't okay. But down to the wire, he just like I don't understand why she's treating me like this. I just, I just, I just wanted a date. I wanted a friend. Like yeah, this is not how you get one. Crazy. <laughs> He don't understand why Angela don't want to meet him under the mistletoe. He just don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> but we, and now this is something that made me mad and always makes me mad sure. in one of these fight for survival movies is when you finally get into a car and drive recklessly. I don't need to speed. Yeah. I'm in a car. Like, <laughs> Child, not I only that, it. like, I, 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 she had been through a lot, so I gave her a little credit for the reckless driving. As soon as she decided for it to be a duel, I was like, ma'am, what? <laughs> what? This, is a, this is a showdown. Like, come on. Like, all right, boom. Like, yeah. I've been waiting on this all night. Come on. Like, girl, what? <laughs> what is this? <laughs> what is oh, my God. She wanted to play chicken. Like, yeah, that irked me. That made me mad. Like, you watched watch your me. whole life and you up here trying to be. Oh, I don't know why we did that, but she ends up like celebrating that she won in chicken and then she crashes and the car flips over. Like, <laughs> like <laughs> yeah, I thought I didn't know if she was going to like, we got all the way here to die, girl. You going make- <laughs> to make it out of this or not? Right. But then when he comes over, she pretends to be knocked out mm-hmm. and he's still just acting so like, oh, normal. Chill up. <laughs> <laughs> just, and I love when how he keeps saying throughout the whole movie, let me help you. And yeah. Angela's like, let me help you for a change. And she got these like, you know, those metal nail files. Mm-hmm. She got one of those when she was in the little office trying to undo her handcuffs, but couldn't. So that's what she used to stab him in the eye. Mm-hmm. And I had a visceral reaction to him pulling that nail file <laughs> out of his eye. Oh, I, I was that. here for it. I was here for it. I was like, oh, finally, somebody better die. I was hoping that he was going to kill them two cops. Like, girl, give us some type of carnage. What you doing? You going to kill nobody? <laughs> I wish you would have killed the cops too. <laughs> <laughs> you already killing everybody else. What's two more cops? Just come on, let's let's get this done. But she's able to use the handcuffs, strangle him, which doesn't kill him. It just knocks him out, and then she gets the keys off of him, handcuffs him to the car, and he just is like, "I just, I just wanted us to be friends." <laughs> Tyra, has any of your friendships ever started like this? Oh, please, please, please. I stay clear of anybody who even remotely, I feel like they might be a Tom. Absolutely not. Stay clear of all the crazies. Like, it's it's, 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 it's a little too nice, a little too extra. You could already tell that something was off about him. Like, absolutely not. Like, no. It, it, felt, it felt like a show, like he was putting on a persona to get her. Like, it just... You know, hey, we, we're watching it, so you just never know. But, you know, I'm staying clear of all things, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> He's literally sitting handcuffed after holding this woman hostage, violating her, changing her clothes, trying to drown her in the elevator, sicking mm-hmm. Cujo on her. And Chasing he really her, her, freezing cold in that garage, tasing <laughs> her, putting her in the trunk, chloroforming it, like... A whole, a whole lot. Like he, you have tortured and tormented me this whole entire night to the point of the brink of death. Just to go, well, you know, I just, Angela, I just, I just wanted us to have some alone. Time. What, what? <laughs> <laughs> and I really, I really would want to know, like, if he would have just, you know, hey, I'm Tom, I'm security. I was wondering if you like to hang out sometime. Like she, she might have seen. <laughs> yeah, but you know, this was his way of wooing her. <laughs> You know, every man has their ways. This was Tom's. Yeah, it's trash. I was so happy when when he got his little comeuppance. Get out of here. (laughs) 
But he's sitting there and literally has the nerve, the gall to say, why can't we be friends? Why can't we spend Christmas together? <laughs> now, this is a part that really was always crazy to me. Now, Tyra, tell me if this is all black people or, or is this, was this just my experience? Now, this movie came out in 2007. That was, mm -hmm. was like two years after I graduated high school. And he says to her, do you hear me, you stupid effing punt with a C, right? The C word. Uh -huh. yeah, I, I tell you, I had never heard that word a day in my life until I like mm. heard it in movies. I don't and know. I That's a Caucasian. Understood. Okay, because I'm like, is this like That's a Caucasian like word if I ever heard one. <laughs> I ain't never heard stupid any like old school horror, especially if you want to get into like a eighties. Not like oh, there, there was the aunts were all outside, like like or if you if I'm watching like a um something uh like something drag or gay oriented and it's like cunt 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 cunt, cunt, cunt like boom cat 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 those type of aunts you'll hear it there, but just and like uh to curse someone and go, oh you you oh you like uh, i've never heard that never in my life like please somebody called me that i would bust out laughing like what you say right that's what i was thinking <laughs> like i wouldn't even like okay i am all right because i'm like it doesn't even register and i'm like anytime i see a movie the woman gets so and i'm always like why is she mad like oh my god he called me a <laughs> <laughs> god. i can't believe it like what i'm like oh okay and I ain't going to tell you, I was even more confused when I found out what the word meant. Like, oh, okay, he called you a vagina? Like, you got, yeah. you got that mad? Like, I'm, I'm still confused to this day. Like, why do the women in movies get so mad when they get called that? That's a slur. Like, in my mind, you just called me a bitch. You just called, oh, you just called me out my name. He just called me, like, they be taking their words serious in these movies. And then yes. little Caucasian circles, like, <gasps> like, oh my gosh, I can't believe you. They get very upset. Like, I, I I wouldn't be one for it. I'd be like, you know, my ass. I'll get completely, like, yes, yes, queen. <laughs> Say it again. I, like, oh, you meant that in a derogatory way? My bad. I missed it. <laughs> right. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so after every single thing he did to her, she ready to just walk away. But the moment he calls her that word, she lights <laughs> him on fire. <laughs> like, that did it. Like, you know what? Everything else. <laughs> I was going to let everything else go, okay? <laughs> everything else. But that, oh, I'm not going to stand for that. Ugh. Like, I could forgive you tasing me. I could forgive <laughs> you messing up the kids' Christmas presents, drowning me. But that word? Oh, hell no. Nah. You can't call me that now, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was the craziest thing. So, of course... He get Tom get. I feel bad for Tom. Tom ain't deserve to die. Tom should have been in a mental institution. Tom was crazy. Yeah. <laughs> he shouldn't have called her the c word. I don't know. I don't got no pity for him. You, 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 she was walking away. You, you, you had to t take it up a notch, and she did what needs to be done. I don't feel sorry for nothing. <laughs> nope. So the the fire sprinklers, you know, get set off. She's able to use Tom key to finally unlock the gate, get free. She's soaking wet, walking through the streets as it's snowing. No shoes. No but what kidding. really kept the movie off for me is you see the sirens heading in her direction. The movie <laughs> fades to black. And we hear somebody say, hey, you all right, lady? <laughs> Nigga, do I look all right? Do people that are all right walk outside in the snow wet and barefoot like that? Really? And bloody. Wet, barefoot, and bloody. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, they gotta do that in movies. Oh man, man, is everything, is everything okay? Like, what? Do it look like I'm okay? <laughs> okay, Joseph said that the C word toward Caucasians is like the N word. Like, come on, child. Okay, like I'm gonna let y'all have that because I, I like that word. You could call me that all day, and I'm gonna just sit there like, all right, like I, it means nothing to me. But apparently, it is. Mm. <laughs> The biggest offense. I'm gonna start as soon as I'm in a white circle. I'm gonna say it and see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see everybody like gasp for air, like, <gasps> like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, did you hear, did you hear what she said? I'm gonna just say it because I want to see what happens. <laughs> what was your overall feelings on P two? 
Pink 2 is a cool movie. Personally, I'm going to always just stick with ATM. I was like, I could have watched ATM. <laughs> just a few more bodies drop. I love, like, if it's going to be uh, one lo- a one location B-type horror movie, I just come here for the, for the I'm a, uh, whoever. What, what's your boy's name? Who be talking about the carnage? Oh, you talking about uh, uh, Cody Leach? Yes, Cody Leach. I'm here for the carnage. If you're going to just be a little low budget situation, we're going to be in this parking garage, not leave. He's going to just chase and antagonize this one person. I need hella bodies to drop along the way. Enough bodies didn't drop for me, but it is something like maybe during the holidays, if you had like a little horror-thon type situation, I will put it in there. It is, it's not, you know, cheesy to the point that I'm like, okay, I'm not watching this anymore. It's, it's cool. <laughs> now, when I think of, I love this movie. Like, I can't rave about it enough. Like, I absolutely <laughs> love P2. I remember seeing it for the first time when it came out. Loved it then. I think it's aged well. But mm-hmm. when I think of my favorite type of like thrillers or horrors, I absolutely love an isolated location and a fight for your life scenario. So mm-hmm. when you think of like your, because I just feel like that feels so visceral. That feels so like. I like I love all types of, of like scenarios with thrill and horror, but I love stuff that feels more real life. Mm. So like being oh, isolated, something, being, something like hush. Yes, yes. Mm. Like that feels like something that could actually like my sister was talking about, let's go get a cabin for the, I'm like, I want to be in no yes. isolated no, cabin. Let's go. You you will be scared. Just go. Ain't nobody coming for you. <laughs> everybody come in. Everybody, it's everybody first response. Soon as somebody mentioned a cabin or camping, let's go to the woods. I ain't trying to die. Girl. Looking for you. Most gonna roll up on you is a, a animal, maybe. Get out of here. <laughs> but I'm oh. like, that's just that scenario. Like, I don't care. I just absolutely just love. Like, even that movie Frozen. Have you seen that when they're stuck up on the, the slopes? I keep seeing it like on Tubi. They always trying to like, hey, like a little nudge. Like, you want to watch Frozen? I'm like, nope. <laughs> but I've I've heard like really good reviews about it, so I'm I'm gonna check it out. That's another one on my list. It was next to P two. <laughs> I'm gonna check it out. I'm gonna check it out. If y'all didn't know, P two is available on Tubi. <laughs> yes, if you are interested in watching, it's actually free. I was like, oh shoot, because I never hear people talk about this movie. Mm. But I guess it's getting a little traction. It's free on the Roku channel, Tubi, Plex, Freebie, <laughs> Pluto TV. Yeah. And if you have a subscription to Shutter or AMC Plus, it's on there. So yeah. it's available a lot of play. But I'm like, I never hear people talk about this movie. I hadn't heard but of it until I you it. it. I see then it's not Wes Bentley in it. Wes Bentley is always Wes Bentley is good for playing a crazy person. Yeah, <laughs> yes. antagonizing Absolutely. somebody, he's good for that. So this is early <laughs> Wes Bentley. So that's that's always really good to see. He looks so. What different. is your favorite um like scenario or atmosphere for a horror or a thriller? You know, I like a slow burn type of situation. You know, I'm fancy. <laughs> I like sci-fi. I like an invasion of the body snatchers, aliens type of something like that where you never know. Like just something where some like really heightened intensity. I like really good. I like the sophisticated horrors. Okay. Okay. That's, that's what I like. <laughs> I like a good slash. I like the elevated horror. <laughs> yeah, I do. I do. I love me. My favorite horror is invasion of the body snatchers. That is my drop dead favorite like it's so many like highs and lows there you get a lot of like intensity you feel the loss like i love a good horror movie like if you could be horror and sci-fi and bring me to a little tear in the end because when 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 baby decides to you know disappear in the fields and he's holding her i'll be gone i'll be out of there like oh donald she gone <laughs> <I'll be sad. laughs> oh donald sutherland she disintegrated she she's one of the pot people just run and just go it's not her anymore or just when he, when we have sister girl running around in the end and, you know, she's like, oh, I don't know who I can trust out here. Oh, look, there's Donald Sutherland. Let me go over there. He's like, oh, oh damn that you did it. <laughs> I almost thought I had somebody. I, lo- I love that. I love that. I love uh, um anything because, you know, once you have Alien and then you have all of the movies that pretend to be Alien. I love when we can go up in space and we're isolated. Once again, we're isolated, but we're in space on a, on a ship craft. And it's like, oh, what's that? Let me go touch it. And then you're going to die. You know, you, <laughs> you didn't took something back with you on the damn spacecraft. I like those type of, type of horror movies best or just uh, something really, um, which I don't know if it's considered a horror. Have you seen um, The Wailing? Uh, the Asian movie. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah movies like that. Like, movies like The Willing. Movies like uh, The Sadness. Uh, oh my like, God. The Sadness was... Mm-hmm. Yeah, that now I'm surprised you listened to Sadness. That movie yeah. was insane. Yeah, I like those type of movies. Those are those are those are the ones that I like. I like those horrors in particular. And then I can always get into a zombie situation. I like zombies. <laughs> oh, I am so now that again for me is like just one of those subgenres that or I guess it's not a subgenre, just like the of uh, the monster of it. I, I, I can't get enough of zombies. Like mm. I love zombies so much. Let me see. Give zombies. me zombies all day. I love me some Bram Stoker's Dracula. Like I like the dramatics of it all. Like <laughs> I do. Like that's a, that's why I love the the first Candyman so much. Like it's something poetic. It's some substance to the story. Like I, not nah, on a good day, I can't just throw in a couple of slashes and just let you know Freddie, Jason, and all the other ones run amok. But yeah, something like like the first Hellraiser. That is oh, that is that's my stuff right there. All the body horror, and then it's like the little eroticism. It's a little ooh ooh wee, you know, Frank. Hey, Frank, you know, I, I like that. I like that. I like that. <laughs> I like I that. I absolutely love Hellraiser. Oh, like, um, <laughs> Jesus wept. Like, I love Jesus. <laughs> you know, I love that. All of that, just the, I love, I love me some good body horror. I, lo- I love that. Like, we could get gross. I'm here for that. I like for something that's good. Like, oh, if I got to like turn away, I like that. And then, you know, pretty much, I guess everything, I'm not going to say everything. Some of the, a lot of the stuff that A24 has dropped <laughs> these past few years, I'm like, oh, these are like different. I, I, all the little stylized, um, cause I don't know how you would feel. Like, do you like stuff like Midsummer and, um, what's the other one? You know what? I'm not a fan of like Midsummer, Hereditary, the yeah, like hereditary. elevated horror movies. I tried no. to see Mid. No, I tried to see Midsummer. I cut it off after like ten minutes. That girl <laughs> got on my nerves. She was so oh, whiny nice. and clingy. And then I tried to see Hereditary. I saw it for like fifteen minutes. Um, after the boy, uh, spoiler alert: if you have not seen Hereditary, after his sister died, he just walked in the house and laid the hell down. I was like, "Tell him out of here!" Like, <laughs> what the hell is this? I really like Hered. Regardless, if like Hereditary has one of the best acting performances from the lead, uh, I think it's Tony. Tony Collette. Collette. Yeah. It's the best. Like, you just finish it just for her. If it's and it's it's also really good. Like it's it's really good. It's you get it's I I, I love like midsummer. Child, I'll leave midsummer on the ground. I'm not. I didn't have my feel of the cult situations and all of that. It, it looked like Burning Man, and I I always found Burning Man to be a little boring. I'm I'm okay with that. But um, I think you should watch it. I think the the ending and the payoff is just really really good, and that you should check it out. I think you should give it another chance and try to make it be on uh, ten minutes. <laughs> Well, I might try uh and finish hereditary, but Did I'm you like, watch the witch, then? I have not seen the witch. Like oh, you've been sleep. Oh, you've been watching all the other know. old school horrors from the 2000s, 90s, and 80s on down. Well, see, I don't watch everything. It has to kind of yeah. like I don't know. I'm just not into the like elevated horror. I hated it follows and everybody raves about it. I thought mm. it'd be like it's just it's not my like give me more of the sadness, like or Hellraiser. Give me something like yes, give me a good, actually creepy, you know, well written story. But like, give me some gross out, like this. I feel like stuff like Midsummer. I don't want to see him and his friends talking and her, like I don't know, like who gonna get sliced up? Like just no, feel- nobody, nobody except for that old couple. <laughs> nobody. <laughs> Everybody in the end, like all of those elevated situations, there is built up tension to like have a big impact or death on the end. They never just outright. Nobody's dropping bodies. And you, you think know, I ain't got time for that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be watching like, die, nigga, die. <laughs> so I'm sure you like, I was like, I, I like those. That's why I just kind of stick in the realm of. Just the old school. I just, I'll watch the old school movies like I've never seen them and keep going because we don't get like gory, like video drone type of movies anymore. Like they don't make stuff like that. Or like The Fly. I will watch The Fly any day oh, and just fly. be like, oh my God, and get cringy every single time he starts to remove stuff from his body because oh, he's falling apart. Yeah. They don't really make stuff like that anymore. They just want to, you know, elevate everything, which I like, but it's okay to still stick to what, you know, the, the old school stuff that we like. <laughs> yeah so what so what decade would you say is the best for horror girl the 80s what you talking about <laughs> that ain't even a question it's, it's always going to be the 80s like 
I love the eighties. I really do. I love, I like the set, like the, like the later seventies too, but like the eighties is good. Cause you know, that's when it was, I think it was like the horror Renaissance then. And then the nineties is slowly started to try to like kind of fall off. And then we get to the later nineties, early two thousands. And they kind of start to kind of, you know, pick back up. When I think about nineties, like I just think about scream, like, it's not a whole lot there to me, in my opinion. I just think about Scream and stuff like Scream adjacent. Oh, Cherry Falls and um, Urban I Legend. Love Cherry and Falls. <laughs> all, all of those, like they were, you know, the Matt, who, who's the killer? Those type situations, which are, you know, cool or like, what is it? I was trying to think what it's called. I think it's called Disturbing Behavior. Like, those I love that movies. movie. <laughs> All that's all that was that was in there. Of course, we have my gems, like you know, Faculty, aka Invasion of the Body Snatchers adjacent. I love yes. those, but like. I, I love I love the eighties like down no matter what. <laughs> See, I I some of my absolute favorite horror movies are from the eighties like um demons and um mm-hmm. the blob remake but I feel like I'm not a big fan of eighties horror as a whole. It's mm-hmm. way too cheesy and campy for my <laughs> taste. I got like a little camp, but it's like too too much. I really feel like the twenty first century is my favorite. Mm. Or like I feel like it just of course like movies like you know from the 70s I, I love absolutely love Attack of the Body Snatchers and like the thing it set the foundation mm. and it's definitely classics for a reason but I feel like it just the genre just got better and I feel like it's the reason why more people are a fan of horror like mm. I remember growing up horror was not a popular genre but now mm. it's the most popular genre I think that happened for a reason I just love that we have multiple like I'm just here for all the slashes like I love that I can go to the 80s and just hand pick like okay because the like those 2000s it's like we had a resurgence of like oh we're just gonna remake oh Jason and we're gonna get you know Leatherface and just put it like re I just love to be there like all the like the early Leatherface like the one they sleep on I think is it the is it the second I think that's the second Leatherface where it's like really campy or is that the third one it's like over the top campy leather face. Like he's I like you mean a third one. He's all erotic, like a, a horny child running around. <laughs> but like those, I, lo- I I love I love those. Like I love those. Look look at you with super chats in the house now. <laughs> Let's check out the super chats. Let's see what we got. Thank you, Fletcher. I suck at games channel for the support <laughs> hugs and support. Happy New Year. Happy, happy New you, Year Fletcher. to you, Fletcher. Thank you, Fletcher Williams. Thank you, so thank, you, thank, you thank you, Fletcher. <laughs> And let's see, we got um, Swak fan 100. Did I say that right? I'm late, but just saying what's up. Better late than never. Thank you so much for the support. If anybody yeah. wants to support, we truly, truly appreciate Thank it. You, Thank you. He always, always rolls up and supports. When he has a moment to be here, he supports and sends a super chat every single time. And I appreciate you for that to no end because baby, dry county. <laughs> Thank you so much for that. I appreciate it. Oh my gosh. But yeah, the um, and thing was OG. Yes, I completely yeah. agree. And you know, it, I have a a special Thank relationship. Them with them. all, the, all of that. I came here to kick Chuka Bubblegum and kick ass. You gonna lead that for the twenty first century? All right. <laughs> <laughs> you gonna lead John Carpenter for the twenty first century? The thing is literally, and I I absolutely hate questions like, "What's your favorite like movie?" There is no one, but if I had a gun to my head, if I was in a saw trap and I just had to say one, it would be John Carpenter's The Thing. Yeah. I, that movie is so perfect, but I actually didn't like it when I first saw it. <laughs> and it was, no, hold not, not. It's a reason though, because my mother was a teenager when The Thing came out, John Carpenter's The Thing. And mm-hmm. I spent my whole childhood with her regaling me when she saw it in theaters and how iconic it was when she saw it. She was so scared. She had to walk out of the theater for five minutes. Oh, wow. Dramatic, okay? I love that movie, but that's dramatic as hell. So imagine being built up like you were so scared you left the theater. So when I finally saw it, I was like, you walked out because of this? <laughs> this was her exorcist. Like, you know what? It's, it's, yeah. it's just too much. <laughs> I got I to gotta walk out. I'm getting ready to vomit. Uh, Fletcher said he just subscribed to your channel. Thank you so much, Fletcher. Thank you. Thank you, Fletcher. Fletcher. Thank you. But yeah, I feel like I definitely, the thing is like one of my, like my my favorite movie ever. It Mm. is just perfect from top to bottom. I don't see any flaws. Just, 
I, hey. I, that's one of those movies that I literally can watch it. Like, I remember one time I saw it twice in 24 hours. Like, it just doesn't get old. <laughs> it's good. Kurt Russell is, like, in his bag. I love me some old OG Kurt Russell. Got, you know, um, Keith David there because, you know, Keith David just was everywhere. <laughs> you know Being People always talk about Kurt Russell in The Thing. Childs is my favorite. Like, Childs is my favorite character in The Thing. I feel like I would be Childs. But, Tyra, <laughs> let me ask you something about The Thing. And mm -hmm. I feel like one thing that I feel like no movie has ever been able to replicate is the suspense factor of The Thing. Mm -hmm. They were so, I mean, it was just so brilliant. The whole not knowing who it could be. Even when we talk about that key, and he's like, well, I always give it back to you. And I always give it back to you. Like, we was to no, it out. is. It's good. Once you get to the blood test, it's like, oh my God, I wonder, I wonder who, who is this. And then like, I knew it wasn't nobody. Then it's like, ah. yes, I, I love that. But you know what? I always felt like, so we get to the end of the thing and people mm -hmm. always debate, was Childs the thing or was Kurt Russell? I feel like Kurt Russell was the thing. Yeah. I always thought that. I always okay. thought that. Okay. He had, he had too much time to be alone with the thing. I don't know. You know, David was sitting there like, all right, you know, I guess we're going to just sit here and, you know, I ain't keeping, I ain't taking my eye off. He like, he had sense enough to not just completely wipe it out. But I never just went like, oh no, it's Kurt Russell. So he could never be the thing. No, he was, he was the thing with the A. No, he was. <laughs> Not with the A. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I definitely always felt that it was, it got Kurt Russell. It got him. It did. It did. It did. It did. And I, but I love that it's like ambiguous. Like it won't yes. have to close everything off with the, with the answer. Like just leave it alone. Oh, yeah. Yes. Very very good. Very good. Once again, we get more like invasion. Of, you see how everything comes back to invasion of the body snatchers. That's what I'm like saying. Today. They are definitely <laughs> like invasion of the body snatchers with um Donald Sutherland, the thing, demons, both the blobs, the black and white and the 80s blob, but the 80s mm -hmm. blob is my favorite. Those oh, yeah. are literally some of my favorite movies of all time. Like, I know Twitter Ooh, first Night of the Creeps. Oh, Night of the, Night of oh. the Creeps. Night of the 80s, Living. you I see? Know. You see how the 80s just keep creeping up on you? You see? You need to come on no, over it here. Doesn't, it doesn't creep up. I feel <laughs> like I even the black, I watched the black and white Night of the Living Dead. I just saw that yesterday. Like, still. For the first up. time? No, 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 no. Like, I'm like, rewatching. <laughs> like, rewatching. I, I just yeah. saw it again yesterday. I Feel watched good. the black and white Night of the Living Dead, and I watched the remake with Tony Ty all the time. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I don't think anything comes close. But outside of those core movies that I love, I don't love that time period of movies. Mm. as a whole i feel like i can name a lot more movies that i love in the 21st century than i can name from the 70s and 80s oh, no. we got night of the living dead return of the night of the living girl love the return of night of the living dead oh, love that two and three it was just getting real extra <laughs> <laughs> real extra like all the you know i love the practical effects of the era i just it, it was it just yes. feels like there was so much diversity i know you will think about the 80s and just chalk it up to oh everybody was slasher and killing you know girls in the woods and oh look it's like, titties out like, no, it, was, yeah. it was not it was not even sleepaway camp we couldn't we couldn't dare get a sleepaway camp today yeah. <laughs> these are some profound movies that I just I, they they hold it and then like stuff like the first Nightmare on Elm Street the first uh Friday third like it's really good right the Halloween like even though that's 78 but you know I'm just gonna take that one just because I feel like it um <laughs> this is like those are like really not even good oh this is good for a horror movie like no these are really good movies it's really good writing like I'm just I'm gonna stay with the 80s and just you know stay my stay myself over there I, I love it I love it I love it never get another time like it you know them sisters weren't sistering like they was <laughs> you could get away with all kind of stuff all kind of derogatory like really like y'all got to say that like yeah yeah I'm, I'm, I'm here for it I'm here for it I will say <laughs> I wish we did more it's crazy how technology has advanced but we ha we definitely had better effect like I miss that is one thing I hate I hate like it doesn't ruin my experience of a movie but I do not like CGI in my horror I want practical mm -hmm. Don't give me no fake CGI blood. Like, give me real practical effects. It makes no sense that the effects in the thing can hold up better than some 2000s horror because no, the, the effects in the original thing to the effects in that little prequel they tried to do. Child, oh, terrible. that made me so mad. Yes, yeah. I, I, it makes it hard for me to cape for the thing. I actually love the 2011 The Thing, I think it was a solid prequel 
I like that movie. But Y'all, made, don't judge Nikki. She don't know better. <laughs> I feel like if it was not attached to John Carpenter's and it was just a standalone movie, I think people mm. would have embraced it a lot more. But if you're putting it up against the thing, of course it's mm. inferior, especially when you don't use practical effects. Nope. Like, and then, no, you got to think about that. You know how many freaking anthologies we got in the 80s? Like, how you going to leave the creep shows on the ground? Like... I need I need you to come I need you to just come on around like just 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 stop playing like I see Fletcher in the chat Evil Dead Evil Dead Two Cujo the Lost Boys like come on come on we 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 can go all day I don't see the twenty first century popping like that I just I just don't I just don't see yeah uh, I'm gonna go at twenty first <laughs> and and I also feel like I go at the twenty first because I personally like my horror as dark as possible. I don't like any type of comedic relief. And when I go back to movies like Nightmare on Elm Street, it was very comedic. And I'm just not, I, I love that movie, but I'm more of a fan of just complete dark, gritty horror. I don't want any mm -hmm. relief from tension. I don't want anything comedic. And of course, I absolutely love Return of the Living Dead. Very comedic in that. Mm -hmm. Love it. But I prefer just a straight, dark, like, I want to shit my pants. Like, I can't do that if y'all making me laugh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, all right, all right. I mean, it's it's more of, you know, campy than because it is the 80s. But there are some gems in there. Like, oh, I, and I love, like, the gems. I love the, the um, even when we get into something like, you know, Season of the Witch and, just the 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 campiness. I I love a good like. Hey, we're we're frat boys and we don't know what's going. Oh my god, is that a zombie? Like I, I, I <laughs> we got the girl that I'm a, I'm a cheerleader. Like oh my god, my blouse just opened. I'm about to get stabbed. Oh. <laughs> I like that. I <laughs> I like that. It's just it just has so much a uh, rewatch quality to me. I I love it. And then if you you know you really look because those are the things that come to mind first. But there are some really serious because this is you know the moment where we got into the like the really dark stuff like like last house on the left type darkish or hills have eyes type darkish like a lot of that stuff was still coming down from the, the 70s and just really and then you know we get like the shining like you get now if you was laughing doing the shining we gotta talk <laughs> <laughs> It's some really good psychological things, you know, misery. Like this is when, you know, um Stephen King was really outside with the books. Like these I I feel like I feel like they're good. They're, they're really, really good. Yeah, it definitely <laughs> I mean, I definitely do not think that it, it is definitely a golden era. Mm -hmm. I'm just like, I I gotta say, and then you know what? I was one of those people that will always say, Oh, yeah, the 80s was the best. It was the best. But when I really sat to be like, if I listed every movie I love from the 80s and every movie I love from the well, not movie horror that I love from the 80s, horror I love from the 90s, and horror I love from the 21st century, I, my list for the 21st century is going to be longer. Mm -hmm. Like, yes, my list from the 80s will be better, <laughs> but it won't be longer. Oh, I love me some Chucky, some Child's Plays. Love me some critters. All, all of them. I'm watching everything. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm watching everything. Oh, man. It's Somebody really said uh, they like to see see you review Drag Me to Hell. Love that movie. Mm-hmm. Hey, Naya. Who you want to see? You want to see Tyra do? Tyra do Drag Me to Hell. That's the throwback. They got some Drag Me to Hell coin. <laughs> <laughs> I need some Drag Me to Hell coin. Like... Cause yo, we been real cute on this live, and you know you came and you said your piece. You ain't say nothing about why this gonna be the last horror situation on the channel, right? Yeah, it's got it's got to be some coins. But well, I see Gremlins. You know my Gremlins is once again another Christmas movie you ain't put on the list. Why the Gremlins wasn't there? That's the Christmas. That's a down bad Christmas movie. That did not make your top ten. <laughs> no, Gremlins does not make my top ten. I'm not the biggest fan of Gremlins. It's fine. Oh, it's fine. <laughs> You know what? <laughs> this is this is why we can't hang out, Nikki. This is <laughs> King like... Gore. See, King Gore gets it. Mm. Low key, mid ninety to mid two thousands doesn't get enough credit. One hundred percent. I feel like people, and I honestly feel like yes, I like. I'm not saying I one hundred percent feel like this is Tyra's true opinion because we know Tyra. But I feel like <laughs> when I interact with a lot of horror fans, I feel like they just regurgitate stuff they feel like they have to say as a horror fan. And mm -hmm. as a horror fan, you feel like you have to kind of respect 
the 70s, eight, like you can't say anything was better. Like, no, no, like it's blasphemy almost. Like, how dare you say you don't like Nightmare on Elm Street? Or how dare you say you don't like Texas Chainsaw? I'm actually not the biggest fan of Texas Chainsaw Massacre, honestly. The original, like, it's fine. But that girl screaming at the end gave me a damn headache. Like that was too much. <laughs> no, I'm not the biggest fan. I like the I like the second one, and then I like the third one. Like the it's very uh you know it's low budget it's slow paced it's it's good for like a um because you know when we we don't we're not of any age to be around when these movies have come out so certain stuff is just on your list like you know if you a horror fan these are things you're supposed to watch because this is a part of the genre like this is heavy so you watch it but mine's is uh, i definitely love the second one and in the third one more than the you know i'm here, I'm here for the campiness <laughs> so <laughs> I'm going to I'm going to love those things but like yeah just uh I think I watched The Gate with my kids the other day like just oh, is that the one with the where that was in the kids backyard Yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just watch just watch it stuff like it's just I don't know like it's just something about those movies that's why I said like the 70s and the 80s because if you're looking for like more of the psychological like um I think it's Don't Look Now or um like the, you know he carries uh once again, the invasion of the body snatchers, the spear, you like all of those things are there. Like it's, it's, I love that, that portion, seventies and eighties. I like you know, the other stuff too, but if I had to like, just pick one hill to just die on, like I'm not watching no other horror, but this seventies is in eighties uh, is where I'm going to stay. <laughs> well, and that's why she does the throwbacks. That's the golden <laughs> era over on the Review TV channel. <laughs> it is, it is. It's, it's, it's very, very befitting. I would love for, um, Cause that's one thing that uh my subs don't pay for. Nobody ever pays for horror. I'm like, man, y'all, just just give me give me anything. Like the the craft is maybe the closest I've come to. In um the Queen of the Dam that's coming up, it's the closest I've come to somebody like legit like purchasing horror. Like they just don't. Those aren't the things that people want to see me review for some reason. Well, for some reason, we kind of know the reason. Um, King Gore, <laughs> we were talking P two. Now we just talking horror chai. <laughs> yeah, you gotta you gotta run it you gotta run it back, King Gore, so we can we uh wrap it up for P two. But yeah, any anything else you want to say about uh the future of the channel and what what's gonna be happening with that? Well, as I said, this is my last um horror covering horror or thriller on this channel because as uh, some of you might know if you paid attention to the community tab which i really don't be paying attention to my community tab but that's neither here nor there but i did make the decision to start a horror channel just strictly doing horror it's called pretty girls love horror if you are into horror and i will be doing only horror thriller content over there commentary movie reviews mm -hmm. um i have not made the decision to fully leave this channel i honestly feel like um i have an emotional connection to this channel this is my first channel i started on youtube i named it after my brother that passed away that's why my channel is called king nikki i do not call myself a king king was my <laughs> brother's nickname so i just feel like I, I i have a hard time cutting ties with this um channel. it feels overly dramatic for me to cut ties with this no, channel it, just not, it, it should be rightfully dramatic you got the right yeah. to be dramatic no matter you know what's going on with the channel you work really hard on your channel and put up a lot of content a lot of dedication so yes and that is a part of why i made the decision and it was hard but i have been on youtube for two years almost three in a few months it'll be three years I have over 500 videos on my channel. And I don't know if you guys really understand the time, <laughs> the money, the commitment, the energy, the dedication, the stress, the tears <laughs> that goes into <laughs> uploading five over five. And it really is it's much higher. I've deleted some of my earlier videos because I felt like the quality wasn't good. But I have really churned out so much content on this channel. But honestly, I feel like the channel is at a stalemate. It is not really seeing the growth I needed to see. Um, mm -hmm. Me and Tyra had a conversation the other day when she congratulated me on reaching a thousand subscribers. That was like five months ago. Mm. And um, where are we now? <laughs> <laughs> so I just really feel like it is is such a stalemate on this channel um but i'm not going to leave it i do have some channel members so i will be getting up members only content over here um but all of my energy will be or the bulk of my energy 
will be going into my horror channel for the new year. We do have kind of a swan song um, live <laughs> plan for tomorrow where I will be going live to discuss and rank um, all of the new 2023 releases from this year that I watched. Yes. Um, after that, I will be getting members only content up, but I can't say it's not set in stone. A burning bush did not tell me so, but <laughs> as of right now, um, it's going to really just be members only content over here as I try mm -hmm. to build up my pretty girls love horror channel yeah and they should go over there and support you on the pretty girl loves horror channel like uh it's really hard to grow a channel so i i feel very. everything for this child <laughs> it's really hard to uh start over because that's uh essentially what nikki is trying to do so you come over to, I'm going to go over there and leave uh, the link for your new channel down in the chat for people to go and click and find you to go and show you some love over there and get into, you know, black girls talking about horror because we can never have too many of those. Like, you know, just go and support and support the effort to start over. Like, it's really, really freaking hard to start over. I can't even imagine right now just sitting here like, what? <laughs> yeah, It's hard. It's very hard. That's why it is really because me and Tyra have been talking about why don't you just do a straight horror channel? And I was so against it because I just think about all the time and effort it took me just to get to the little penny any like like space that I've gotten to. And I'm like, damn, I got to start from zero again. Like <laughs> it already took me two years to hit a thousand subscribers over here. Like how the fuck long is it going to take me over there? Like, excuse my language, but like. But, I mean, I can't keep putting so much, like, I'm working two jobs and doing, YouTube is literally a 24-hour, like, it, that is such a full-time job. And I'm like, mm. I honestly <laughs> can't keep going at that pace. I'm really burning myself out. And just not seeing the return that I would like to see. Um, yeah, it literally, I mean, to be transparent, it literally took me five months to make $100 from YouTube. Like, <laughs> That fucking ridiculous. Like all the time and stuff that I put into this, and it literally like I I can't. I, oh I, Lord. I can't. <laughs> uh King Gore says, Bed, I got terminated in 2021. LOL. Starting over is a blessing in disguise uh on this platform. Why did you get terminated? Yeah. What did you do to get terminated? I'm, you gotta fill in the gap. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have oh, any plans man. for content in your channel for 2024? <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, Nikki. <laughs> Cause I'm just talking to you now, like ain't nobody else here. Um I I really don't even know. The plans are, you know, to start my Patreon and launch that. And this this channel is gonna borderline become a um <laughs> just a place for advertisement to come over to my Patreon like soon because I um it's the same as you and I know you we have people like oh your channel's doing everybody thinks my channel's doing fine if I don't feel like my channel's doing fine and I'm feeling stuck stifled and like I'm not growing at the pace that I would like to, or YouTube is constantly putting up obstacles for me not to grow. And it's not even the subs it's that I have to, you know, rework things to uh, continue on to uh, be able to do this. And Patreon is looking like that route, even though I really, I really like what I do in the format and how I do it, but we might have to do something different next year. And I'm honestly not looking forward to it, but I'm also tired and I want to be tired for a good reason, not for a bad one. Right, right. <laughs> and I feel like that was something really good you said that I feel like a lot of people don't have perspective on. It's like they look at your channel like, oh, you have 23,000 subscribers. Like, you're you're great. But I feel like people don't understand, number one, yes, of course, you would be thankful for your growth. But at the same time, you shouldn't have to be thankful when you're not where you deserve to be. Like, when you say your subscriber count it sounds like a lot but when you look at over months you should be gaining a certain momentum and yeah. you should be climbing at a certain pace so it's like are you supposed to be stuck at like twenty three thousand, and then be happy when you find like you didn't even hit your we talked about you didn't even hit your end of the year goal for your subscriber count yeah it was not 
at a pace that it should yeah. be. Supposed to be uh 25k hopefully that was what i was going for and i i've past two years i've reached it but this third year i was not able to reach uh 25k i'm blessed you know with the 23 almost 24k but you know i i'm i'm very strategic about the channel and try to focus on not only giving good content but growth to make sure that what i'm putting out is what i'm getting back and it's not there all the time and it's, it's stressful as hell y'all <laughs> it's yeah. stressful it's heartbreaking like it's just really like Cause if this, if I went into this, like, Oh, for, nobody can do this to get money. First of all, yeah, <laughs> this, this is not that, <laughs> this is not that. Cause I know a lot of people, Oh, you do YouTube. You got, Oh girl, how you making money? There ain't, ain't no fucking money here. <laughs> There's no, money. <laughs> There's no yeah. money here. And it's not about that. It's just about people loving what they do and just wanting to talk about movies. Like <laughs> yeah. just want to talk about movies and then just wanting to talk about movies like everybody else here. Like, there is uh in there's no room for um comparison because that's just you gonna kill yourself on here trying to compare yourself to other people. <laughs> but for certain scenarios, when you come to like time restraints and certain restrictions for you know certain videos and uh, like it's just a lot of stuff that doesn't come off as fair. And there's a lot of like politics that come with YouTube that you just aren't aware of. So you have to figure out different ways to still do this. But, and I wish I could be one of those people. Like I've just, you know, out of the kindness of my heart, you know, I just, <laughs> I want to put in all this damn effort, <laughs> work hard on my videos, make sure, you know, I'm giving you guys great content just out of the kindness of my heart. And I want like, no baby, I need a coin. This is hard. <laughs> yeah. This is hard. This is literally like the hardest job I've ever had. The most work I've had to do with a job ever. And I never thought I would say that about YouTube. I thought this was going to be the easiest little cute little situation. <laughs> I did. I said, I'm going to get on here and talk about these movies. And child, this ain't going to be no skin off my back. Like, how much time it's going to take? All fucking day. <laughs> All day. A couple days. Like, it's just it's just really, really, uh, it, it's hard to be in this space. Like, mentally. <laughs> it's, hard. it's hard to be in this space mentally. Like, because I know a lot of people, when they see, you know, what you're saying about, you know, just servicing, you know, the members that you have. Or trying to start a new channel or people starting uh patreon and like oh y'all just trying to get a buck y'all just trying to like it is so not about that <laughs> it's about it's about that and like so many other things as to why nikki would make 500 fucking videos and start over first of all yeah. start over like <laughs> to make that many videos and just feel like you know what i think my best bet would be to start over it says a lot about the type of space that's it, that this is or for me to be fortunate enough to have you guys you know some of you guys support and pay for content and super chat and things like that so want to have to result to like something like patreon and secondary platforms nobody wants to do that <laughs> nobody wants to do that i just really i really want to just make videos and it, it just seems to be um yes honey go ahead honey. <laughs> it seems to be getting harder like every day and I just can't uh, <laughs> just come take the charger from right under my butt. Thanks, honey. I love you too. <laughs> come rolling in my speech. What one is the other one? What do you want? No. Get out of here. Well, well, you can go to your father's house. Just get out of my room. Oh, okay. Well, you see, you see, get get out, get out. I love you too. These are the obstacles that I face every time I try to make. <laughs> Because I know a lot of people are like, oh, you just pump out. Like, there is no pumping out of content here. It's a lot, a lot of things that comes with, you know, Tyra making a good video. Like, ciao. <laughs> and I, I like, I don't care. I'm like, I don't care what's going on or how I'm feeling about YouTube or my growth or my subs or whatever. I'm going to try to put the best video. I put out every single video with the intention of like, this is, this is my first video I'm putting out. Like, I'm trying to give 100% every single time. And then it's just kind of getting to the point where it's just like, is it worth it giving my 100% if nobody's actually going to ever see it? Like, sheesh. <laughs> sheesh. And then and when you see people is... give, uh, if you give 100 and you see people give, you know, 30 and they're like, no, 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 no splice to any of those people, you know, get it how you live. But it's just like, damn, why can't just give me half of what that person has and I'll be chilling. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be chilling. Oh. That's why I'm like, I hate when people make comments like, oh, you, you just want money. Are you just first of all, anybody doing anything? What I mean, Beyonce loves to sing, but she ain't gonna do it for free. 
You know what I mean? <laughs> like, I, I absolutely hate when people say stuff like that. And it's like, even when you were talking about you never thought you would work this hard for, like, you... I, when I tell you one thing I always say is I don't believe in hard work. I believe in working smart, not hard. I do not think the human existence should be centered on work and accomplishment. I think life is bigger than that. And I feel like it is such a scam. Like you can work. Some of the like hardest working people are lower class, like don't have a lot of money. So that's why I always say like, I'm not going to work myself to the bone. <laughs> But YouTube is the first thing I've ever done in my life where I literally fucking work myself to the bone. And it's like, I don't think, that's why I hate when people are like, oh, you just want money. Well, hell yeah, if I'm working as hard as I'm working and I'm spending money on equipment and I'm, hell yeah, I would like mm -hmm. to see some type of return because who the fuck would like, sorry, I keep cursing. Who the heck wouldn't? Like, it's just, but it's like frustrating. Even when I have like, I remember there was like a cycle where when I say I was like pushing out content, like what, recently I did like five lives in a seven day week. And mm. I'm like, I don't know if people even, and I started doing more lives to try to alleviate the time I was spending on content. Cause it takes so long to edit. And when I go live, yeah. at least I don't have to edit, but live it's still real time consuming. <laughs> a lot of time and effort putting the fucking slides together. It was a the video I did for the upcoming 2024 movies and TV show. Like, no lie. Tara, what did it take? Like, 18 hours to do those fucking fly? I was literally about to punch a hole in the wall. Ooh. I was literally about to say, F, you, F all this. Mm -hmm. Like, it literally takes... And I don't even have kids. Like, it's just me and my dog. But trying to work a part-time job, a full-time job, spending 18 hours doing damn slides, working on YouTube, watching the content, taking notes on the content, and then also trying to figure out YouTube. Like, what, what's the title I should do? Like, what's the next content I should do? What's going to actually build track? It is so <laughs> daunting. And I consider myself objectively a mentally strong person. Like, I'm almost 40 years old. Everything that could have been, like, said to me, to me like, I done been through a lot in my life. Baby, YouTube is a lot mentally. Like, it is. Kicking your butt. Like, I'm ready to quit. Ready to Kicking quit. your butt. Kicking your butt. Like, I can't, I, I can't, my, the subs drive me not to quit because it, it damn, it ain't been YouTube for quite some time, but with the subs, the, well, the, I'm going to say the subs who do show up to support because everybody doesn't show up to support. And that's another thing that like kills the channel. Uh, I, I know a lot of people like nobody's asking anybody to know all, all of the, you know, YouTube facts and history. So a lot of people like, you know, what the hell is my like and my sub or, you know, me leaving a comment going to do girl is just me like, or, get over. I'm just coming to watch and I know I'm gonna silently walk away and I say nothing every single video. Like, no, it makes a big hell of a difference. Like, it's just, um, that's the part that kills me. Like, just the subs not participating on the, the, the free end. Like, <laughs> cause I know a lot of people like, girl, I ain't paying like, a lot of stuff, I don't, I don't expect for you to pay for anything. I don't expect for you to, you know, hit me over the super chat or anything. If you do, that's a blessing and I appreciate it, but it's not expected. I just want you to like the video and leave a comment. Like, that's all I want you to do. <laughs> and then not even just that, but like, I feel like just with us being black here, they only want us to talk about certain things. And if we're not talking about those certain things and that goes for our subs too, they're not engaging. Like I notice, you know, certain stuff, I'll get really high engagement and oh, oh, everybody's here for that. Everybody showed up to that live. But if it's just like, cause you know, you be seeing them comments, they be trying me <laughs> like, oh, like, oh, who, who paid for this? Like what? Like, oh my God, I just wish that I could get um, genuine support like every single time. Cause I see uh, a lot of people like, I don't give a damn like what this person is talking about. I just love this person so much that I'm going to support and watch them regardless nope it's just very nitpicky like oh what's she talking about like, yeah girl i'll come back to my, <laughs> like, oh my God. i just want i just want i just really would love like unwavering support and i know like it's delusional to feel like oh every single person who subscribes is going to support you everybody like that's that's malarkey that's never happening <laughs> that's never happening but i know in my mind once i got the ratio down I was like, oh, well, you have this many subscribers physically, mentally, and physically on paper. You actually have this many. So right. if the mentally, physically on paper is not matching up to what I feel like should be showing up, I'm like, okay, something is wrong and I need to switch up something I'm doing so I can survive in this space. <laughs> yeah. And that's another reason why I wanted to start over because, and it's like, of course, every, I mean, I subscribe to people on YouTube and I'm a different type of subscriber to each person. There are certain YouTubers I pay for their subscriptions. Like I yeah. 
feel like I don't care what they're talking about. I just like them. So I'm going to pay for a subscription. Now, do I pay for a subscription to everybody I'm subscribed to? No, of course not. Yeah. But there are different ways of like supporting someone if you like their content. And like you said, liking a video goes a long way for the algorithm, commenting on the video, viewing the video, you know, all of that goes a long way. And having what I call dead subscribers goes a long way in hurting the channel. And it's like, if I have a thousand subscribers, but only 20 people watching a video, that 980 dead subscribers are hurting the channel because it's telling YouTube, oh, these people that subscribe to her aren't even engaged. They don't even content. care. They don't even care. Right. Well, what are we, what are we, we putting this in the algorithm for? <laughs> right. Like, why would we push it to other people? The people subscribed ain't even watching. And of course, every single person I'm subscribed to, I don't watch every single thing they do. Yeah. Like I said, it depends. And there are some people I have to, I wait for their content to kind of build up and I binge it. Like you are yeah. a different subscriber to different channels. Yeah. But I'm not like you're all everyone's going to be a different kind of supporter. But that's why I want to start over, because I personally feel like my ratio of loyal subscribers <laughs> and my ratio of dead subscribers are dead. at such an imbalance <laughs> that it does make me feel like, well, I, I mean, I don't know what else I could have done. But I'm like, what did I do wrong to not have cultivated a more loyal community? So maybe I need to it's just hard. start over. It's hard. Like I've given so much of myself. I'm a, you know, I'm a very private antisocial person. <laughs> I am not the most social. <laughs> I am not the, you know, the biggest uh, social person in the world. I'm not the friendliest person in the world. Like I keep to myself, my little circle of friends, my kids and my man, my little family. That's it. I don't, I'm not, I'm a, a homebody. Like I'm just, I, that's just not me. I'm not a big socializer. If you know me like that, you're going to get the tire that you get here. But I didn't see any growth until it was just like, as you call extra, because she, y'all, she loves to call me extra. <laughs> I didn't see, and it wasn't just like me wanting to be fake or be over the top, or I just noticed something. I was like, if I don't do something, I'm going to disappear in this space. <laughs> I'm going to disappear in this space. I was like, okay, I'm a female. I'm talking about movies and I'm black and I'm on YouTube. Child, I'm, I'm, don't nobody want, ain't nobody looking for none of that. <laughs> nobody's looking for any of that so I was like I can't sadly I didn't feel like I was fortunate enough to just get on here and just I'm just gonna talk about movies and that's it like everybody else and I'm not gonna do any extra bells and whistles and stuff I was like nope I think if I do the bells and whistles I'll have a better chance of being noticed and boy did it work <laughs> yeah so it was just like oh I can't just you know talk about the movies like let me oh I should say some be funny i should be you know charismatic i gotta you know sell a joke i gotta you know make them laugh make them cry. You, gotta, you gotta do everything <laughs> you gotta be everything be freaking everything and you know be extra as you say just to be noticed here i felt like if i didn't do any of that stuff i was just going to disappear and i didn't want to take that risk because i was like i need some i need some growth to happen i need something to happen how can i make the people find me me just wanting to give my opinion and expecting somebody to care no you gotta entice the people to come in like it's, it's almost like begging like come on you gotta lure people to water like <laughs> i was like okay well let me open it and all i gotta do is skit and then let me do like oh i should probably dress up doing the skit and let me then that compiles on the work that i'm doing for just one freaking video <laughs> i love it i love the outcome and i'm just like oh tired is this like me talking to myself because i do that tired it was good <laughs> good video i love the video i was so funny i was so i was like and then it's just like oh but what what, what about when i don't want to do that what about when i just want to just talk about the movie less engagement less engagement yeah. so it's it's different <laughs> it's different but it, it it did make me um it made me love what i do more but i thought mentally not even just being seen i was like if i like hit everything on all cylinders my growth is gonna like I have to get what I'm putting out. I feel like it's going to be so good because I feel like I'm doing so much more than somebody else just to talk about a freaking movie. And I was like, oh, no, I'm getting stifled like everybody else and being stuck and being, um, you know, getting stuff demonetized and getting buried and not being put into the algorithm. Like, why? <laughs> why? Like, then it was like, oh, it, it was taking the fun out of what I love to do most. I love dressing up. I love my skits. I love the extraness as y'all don't know how much she bothered me about being extra. <laughs> She she be on my case all the time. Like, oh my God, Tara, you doing the most in this video. I love this video, but you doing the freaking most. 
<laughs> but I was like, yeah, I just, um, not even that, but you know, when, with the guys, you know, paying for it, I was like, I really want, you know, the person who paid for it to really enjoy it and get their life. Like, oh yeah, Tyra didn't do me a disservice. I felt like I wasted my money. Like, oh no, girl, this was good. I just want everybody to be satisfied and just, you know, be put into the algorithm and have fun at the same time. But that is too much to ask for on this thinking platform. <laughs> <laughs> and I feel like that's one of the things that I struggle with, but I'm kind of, I feel like when I'm very um, passionate about a certain thing, I'm just not going to budge, even if it's like kind of to my demise. And I feel <laughs> like that is one of the, well, one of the ways where I feel like you kind of navigated this space smarter than I have is because like, I feel like I don't want to have to be pretty or be about how I look Not or razzle and dazzle and do all, <laughs> you know, I don't, I want to be able to do like I see other YouTubers in this space do yeah. sit in front of a white wall and just talk <laughs> about a fucking movie, sit in front no. of the same green screen all the time. And I even said like, I'm moving soon. I'm like, I don't think I'm going to just keep buying this software and doing this green screen and I, I'm going to just sit in front of my white wall. I'm going to sit in front of my sofa like I see other people do. And they have 200,000 subscribers because I feel like it should be about what I have to say. And I feel it like, should. no, it it's not it's it. about what you have to make say. It. It's, it's about, not it's about a woman. It's, it's about sad. How you look. It's sad. It's for I, I hate saying like, oh, I was fortunate enough to realize it wasn't just about, you know, us, you know, giving the best content and trying to give the best review possible. I learned that real fast <laughs> and I hate it. I was like, you know, nope. Everybody comes to this channel for something. Some people don't give it every some people are visual. <laughs> if you don't look a certain way, they're not going to stay. They're not going to subscribe. They're not going to care about what you're saying. Some people are listeners. If they feel like, oh, you don't know what the hell you're talking about, they're not going to sit. They're not going to stay. Some people want to laugh. Oh, this is boring. Or oh, some people want more literary uh, discussions. And oh, she's this is a little too comical. She's having fun. I just want her to get to the point. Some people want lengthy discussions. Some people want something short. Like some people want me to shut up, stop singing my songs. I'm never going to do that. Never happening. <laughs> never ever happening. No, don't Everybody saying, comes for no. something different. So I was like, you know, oh, I gotta make sure I look okay. Make sure my video's funny. Make sure I know when to be serious. Make sure I know when to slow it down. Make sure I know when to insert a joke. Maybe I should put a gift here. Make sure my editing is on point. Make sure like that was a whole nother beast getting to edit. I was like, what did I do to myself? Why did I do this to myself? <laughs> Oh, thank you so much, Bree. <laughs> Keep being extra. We love it. Thank you. Thank you. I'm gonna always be extra. Like, I don't know. Like, y'all, y'all let the beast out. <laughs> Soon as y'all started watching the videos and like liking them and they started performing, I was like, they like the real, like my extra ass, the extra I am in private with the people I love. Oh, okay. Y'all done messed up now. We family, and this is what y'all gonna get like every single video. <laughs> But I can't let it back in. But no, Nikki, I and you know I tell you all the time. It's we us just being us is never gonna sadly, it's not it's not fair, but it's not enough. It's not enough, especially just in this space. Once I realized, like, oh, uh, they don't want to hear no black woman talk about no movie. Not even just uh, you know, uh just in the like if they're gonna click on somebody who's talking about a movie and it's you know a black man there, and a woman, they're gonna click, click the man first. I don't know why, but that's just how it goes. And I was like, okay, I gotta get to you know them clicking me first. <laughs> I need you to click me first, or you know care about what what I have to say and still understand like, oh, she's cute. I click because she was cute, but oh, she's knowledgeable. This is funny. This is good. This is entertaining. Like, or you know, I'm gonna stay even though I found out that this wasn't a freaking a uh, reactionary channel. Like, no, it's not that. Like. Damn it, if somebody tell me that again, I'm going to throw up. This is not a reaction, y'all. <laughs> I was going to subscribe, but I thought this was a reactionary video. No, did I put that in the title? No, it's not. <laughs> and those are the channels that blow up, reacting yeah. to it. And I'm like, that's where it's like a lot to navigate and learn when it comes to YouTube. The stuff behind the scenes, the analytics of it, the thumbnails, like you said, for some reason, an audience is more likely to click on a white male. They're more likely to click on a black male. And the last person they're going to, then they're going to click on a white woman. White woman. The last person <laughs> is a black woman. And especially when you talk, first of all, we talk about the movie niche, the movie space. If mm -hmm. we're not being comical and reacting and watching the movie, mm -hmm. you're going to kind of start to really get drowned because they're not going to want to hear what you really have to say. They just want you to cackle and howl and, you know, be fun as you react to it. Yeah. And then especially, particularly 
when you talk about talking about horror movies, they're first of all mm-hmm. women in horror mm-hmm. talking about horror, then black women talking about horror. Like you said, your audience doesn't really even request the horror movies. Mm-hmm. It's like that's just mm-hmm. not something they want to see people that look like mm-hmm. us talk about. And it's like you have to learn because I feel like I honestly came into YouTube a little naive. Like I <laughs> have been watching movies since I was literally two, three years old. I'm watching like freaking Tarantino movies at three years old. Like I was not into cartoons. Like when I talk about movies, I know the history of it. I like, I know, but that doesn't matter. <laughs> like it really no. doesn't. No, nope. That's why I thought it was best to open it up to like a paywall situation, have the subs get get in on it. So I'm like, you know, I'm giving, I don't, I don't even care if it's not you. I'm giving whoever paid for this. This is what you guys requested. Because what I thought, I just genuinely thought, you know, being a, you know, dry, oh, I'm a movie reviewer. I can re- review anything and, you know, just talk about whatever. And they're going to, you know, like, it's like, no, they're only checking for certain things, especially when it comes to myself and my channel. They, you know, you guys want the, what's love got to do with it? The, the, Baby Boys, The Poetic Justice, the, the John Singleton, Spike Lee Breakdown. Y'all, y'all want those. <laughs> y'all want, the, you know, the black movies, the black directors, the black actors. And I I love those movies down. I love those movies. Like, I love every single request most of the time. But I would love to get more variety and just, because sometimes I'll have people like, so can I pay for, because I didn't know if you were like, is this like black chant? Like, I'm black, so yeah. <laughs> this is a black channel, but... I, I it uh we hurt my little feelings a little bit when I have people like question how uh far my capacity can go as a reviewer and just like oh I felt I thought you were limited like you can't oh you can I was surprised you could talk about this like what you just got here clearly shut up <laughs> like <laughs> uh King Gore said are we on letter like letterbox letterbox I am on letterbox are you on letterbox Tyra. Mm-mm, what is that? <laughs> it's like a social media site for um like movie buffs. You pretty much like track like your favorite movies and movies you watch, mm-hmm. et cetera, et cetera. No. Hey my girl. <laughs> but um, that's some of the stuff that people don't really see is like the comments like that, like, oh, I didn't even notice you were black. Like when I clicked on it, because like we don't like you don't put yourself on your thumb, like I've gotten such like racially charged comments like, oh, you actually, oh, or, or either they'll make a comment about like how I talk. Or, Do you speak English? I'll be saying like, hey, I'm fucking, what am I speaking? Like we get such, like, I don't think people realize, like I see someone in a comment, like they don't want to hear, hear a black woman talk about a movie. We're not just making this up. Like this is like, yeah, no, they don't. <laughs> like we get these Hi, baby. types you of comments. And it's okay. Really Call me when you get to where well, text me when you get to where you're going. Okay. Yes. I love you. Exit stage left. My Take the dog with you. Come on. Come on. Y'all know Tyra is a dog mom now. God. <laughs> is Bree still in the chat? Because Bree was in the in the live with me and Jay. Like, cause he came in here all excited that the dog pooped on the mat. And I saw Bree in the chat, like, what is Tyra's not a pet person? She has a pet. Like that took me out. It took me out that she remembered that. Yes, I have a, I have a dog now, guys. I have a dog. You see, you see. I so now I have three kids. Now, now I really need to check. <laughs> you just like you got a pet person. Like, yeah, I, I have a dog. Uh, I'm not a dog person, but my honey and my son very much so wanted a dog, even though it's low key my responsibility. I'm gonna let it go. Y'all don't let her lie to y'all. She be snuggling with that dog. She love that damn dog. So my she ain't a dog person. This is yeah, this not. is like this is like day day five or day six with the dog. I, I've I've adjusted really well. I've been open and nick has been helping me every step of the way because she loves some dogs, child. But it's taking me some time because I have OCD. But I've been really kind. <laughs> <laughs> I have been snuggling. It's a it's a puppy. You know, gotta be look look. I'm not heartless. I'm gonna hug the dog and make sure he's okay. Ugh. But it's it's been it's been nice. I'm loving the dog, and but now it's just like oh, I gotta really factor in the the you know, working, the kids, the housework, the meals, the laundry. Now the dog in these videos. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna make it right. I'm gonna I'm gonna do it. <laughs> <laughs> Mara said, "Watch the dog. Go watch movies and shows with you. I love my dog. <laughs> Definitely. We were watching um uh Pets too <laughs> last night. 
No, y'all weren't watching pets. Yeah, because I just wanted to see how he would react to seeing animated dogs. And he was like, oh, like the the balls squeak on TV. They got actual two toys on TV. (laughs) Um, I forgot who comment that was about Letterboxd, but I put my Mm Letterboxd link in the description box. No, I have um, never been on Letterboxd at all. Like, y'all, I can't. I, I would love to be on every facet of, you know, TikToks and Twitches and Twitters and Ticks and, and I just, I'm tired. <laughs> and see, that's I'm what tired. I'm trying to get smarter about is like the social media presence. Like I started a, a letterbox, a TikTok, a Twitter and an Instagram for my horror channel. I'm like, okay, let me try to be, have yeah. more of an online presence, which kind of annoys me, but... <laughs> I I hate it. I don't like being on social media. I created it so I could, you know, I was like, I know I need something because I do want to connect with the subs and other people from YouTube. But I just, I just wanted to talk about movies and just grow organically. I didn't, I don't, I don't want to do anything else. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't. Yeah. I, I don't. I hate. I do. I hate the fact that we have to, you know, go to back and check all cylinders and. Oh, we just got we just got to do everything to just find a little bit of success that I'm sure everybody else and y'all know who I'm talking about the white people everybody they don't have to do that on this platform okay and I just I want to be like them I don't want to I just I just want to you know make my good am I expecting to grow overnight and oh I'm gonna be on here and I'm gonna get 100k in my first couple like no no I just expect you know consistency and just uh none of the racial politics and those type of obstacles that are getting placed in our face like i don't want to deal with that like who told y'all to put that there leave that shit alone and i'm I'm gonna say shit because this shit is gonna turn yellow anyway because that's what youtube does to my life oh lord limiting that's something else that behind the scenes like (laughs) limiting the video like i already only gonna get a dollar off the video now you gonna limit that youtube come on now no, no, it's a lot. Give Kira's in there. Dollar. Thank you, Kira. I've been seeing your comments, Miss Kira. Thank you so much. Appreciate both you ladies and love the content. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That that's that's what keeps me going because I'm like, you know what? People really just love. Like, I w- I never thought people would love what I did. Like, <laughs> of course, you get on here with the intentions to you know find success and have people care about your reviews, but. You just never know if that's going to actually happen or, you know, you can in your mind, like, you know, I can, I can, you know, a lot of people get here and it's just like, this isn't what I thought it was. It's too hard. Who you think you are mentally on camera explaining something? Somebody be like, oh my God, this is dry girl. Who you thought? Do I want to watch this? So the fact that people want to watch it and you guys engage and support me and go along with all my shenanigans. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Like, oh, I found my people. I love that. But I want to get a coin while I find my people too. (laughs) I definitely feel the same. Like I remember starting this channel with literally only two subscribers, my mama and my aunt and like (laughs) literally growing from like, I am not that person with like a social media presence. Well, I literally started from zero, just put up a YouTube channel, put up some videos and I'm very thankful for my like five loyal subscribers. <laughs> <laughs> no, but yeah, it is like really amazing. Like I will say like that is the thing that kind of my love for movies keeps me going because I just love movies. And I remember growing up, my mother loved Siskel and Niebert. And in my mind, I just, like, I'm <laughs> like, that's, I just want to be Siskel and Niebert like to my mother. Mm. So like that kind of keeps me going. And like the comments from like, you know, the five, six people that support me. Like, <laughs> no, you didn't. Thank you, Miss Kira. She says, uh, self esteem has to be strong for you to child. This will play on your self esteem. Your, your little feelings will get hurt quick. <laughs> like, it is not even about no come. I can care about a comment. I couldn't care. It's, it's the, the algorithm does like digs at your self esteem because it's like as soon as something yeah. isn't reaching a certain plateau, you're not seeing growth, you're not seeing engagement. It's like, okay, what am I not doing? What what, I, yeah. what do I need to fix? I need to do something. Like, I need to change up something. Let me change the intro. Let me change the thumbnails. Oh, no, 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 no. Let me, let me, uh, let me tweak the volume. Let me add music. Let me take away music. Let me, I don't, I don't like, oh, child, you just, <laughs> you just start to lose your whole mind. Cause it's like I'll put up a video and be so caught, like, oh yeah, that thumbnail look good. Okay, <laughs> next thing you know, you put it out, you got five views, and I'm like, dang, let me change the thumbnail, let me change the title. Dang, what's not work? Yeah, you will really <laughs> agonize. <laughs> oh, like, Lord, really said, have any sponsors reached out before? Uh, that's where the real money is. Don't we know it? <laughs> Don't we know it? Like, no. Um, 
I was waiting, like, because I see a lot of people, once they reach a certain plateau, those sponsors do start reaching out. No, I have had um, certain stuff reach out, but it's not so much a sponsor. And I don't know what's required for sponsors to reach out. Like, because they've made it clear it's not, you know, just about sub counts, but more about, you know, personality, you know, subs interaction, uh, engagement and, you know, things like that. But no, no subs, like no, no, uh, not subs, no uh, sponsors. I know me personally has like, you know, reached out. No, no, not at all. Child, tell me what a reach at I reach. Like, I don't, even, <laughs> I don't even know how the hell you supposed to reach at. <laughs> no. But thank you, Latino uh, Slant. I just uh, discovered Latino Slant. He did a really great live. Was it yesterday y'all did that yeah. live? That live was so good. It was like 100 <laughs> hours. It was so entertaining the whole yeah, 100 time. Hours. 100 hours. <laughs> hours. <laughs> it was really good, though. But thank you so much for the support. Mm. But yeah, I wish a sponsor would. I was watching somebody's video. I said it's the Tyra. She was like, guys, this video is sponsored by Lionsgate. I was like, what the? Like, movie studios be sponsored? Like, I didn't even know that. I'm like, what the? <laughs> what? A mo- Lionsgate? Mm. Is this another Lionsgate? Like, I was so <laughs> like, wait, what? How do I tap into that? <laughs> But oh, oh King Gore going in. King Gore said I'm supposed to have some sponsors reaching out. Like, no, and I'm not. I've I've tried not to worry about it. In my mind, the subs who support me and you know pay for movies and all that good stuff and super chat, th- those are my sponsors. The subs has been sponsoring me forever, so it's just not. If it comes along, of course, I'm excited and I'm appreciative of it. But I got to a certain point where I'm just not even checking for stuff anymore because when you get to when you get to looking for stuff, it never it just don't happen here. You you, you cannot have one single expectation for YouTube. Like I used to could at least have an expectation like for at least subs and like knowing how much engagement a video was gonna get before it dropped. Like I already know, like, oh, I don't know nothing no more. <laughs> it's slim pickings, it's the lottery every single time you step on YouTube. <laughs> Yeah, that stuff is hard to get. Even sometimes, you know, we have channels that we've seen that are just sponsored by the followers. Like they are completely funded by the people that want to see the content and they're black content creators. It's like really hard to tap into that stuff. But <laughs> um, yeah, I'm like, this is my, I really be on the verge of just being like, forget it. I guess it's not for me, but I just really love movies and I just keep, you know, torturing myself. Ooh. I guess I'm a masochist. But any last closing thoughts before we head out, Miss Tyra? No, not at all. Just keep keep supporting us. I'll, I'll say that. Like, I am trying to keep my little skin in the game. I will not ever lie and be like, oh, it's easy. I'm just having the best time. Like, no, this shit is hard. I'm suffering every day. Like, it's, terrible. <laughs> it's terrible. It's terrible, y'all. It's terrible. But just off of the, uh, the strength and the support of the subs, you guys supporting that paywall, purchasing those movies, hitting that like button, leaving comments, you know, subscribing and sharing it when you get a chance or like making sure to be there for those lives and just engaging with me no matter what, you know, I'm talking about. Please keep doing that because that is the, literally the only thing keeping me going. If that drops off the face of this planet, so will this channel. <laughs> So guys, make sure um, if you are watching from my channel, make sure you subscribe to Miss Struggle Reviews. Go check out her channel and the content she has coming up. You can just completely hit the link for her. It'll take you over to her channel. Make sure you guys show support. If you enjoy the content and you don't want to just wake up one day and we done disappeared, (laughs) girl, (laughs) make sure like, you know, like the videos, watch the videos, support the channel. If you're somebody who watches but aren't subscribed, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Make sure you go over to Struggles channel. You'll find out in her description box how to purchase any reviews you would like to see her talk about. If you would like to support, you can send a super chat, super thanks. If you would like to support my channel, you can check out my subscriptions, my for members, send a super chat, super thanks. Help keep the channel going, keep the content coming. We appreciate everyone for watching, supporting, showing up for the live, showing up for the videos. I really appreciate it. Struggle appreciates it. And we will see you guys in the next one. Thank you. Good night, (laughs) y'all.